Hey everybody, it's me, your pal, Jum Jumington, former CEO of Jumington Dynamics, broadcasting live from the Jumington Dynamics Auxiliary Hazardous Material Storage Facility somewhere in the world. How is everybody? Welcome, welcome. Hello, monkey maniac. Monkey, monkey, yeah. Jumble my words, monkey maniac, clone. Welcome to the stream. We're doing some fun, exciting blender stuff tonight with a nearly total amateur with blender so that's that's the first thing straight off the, the bat i'm not some super expert with blender i probably do a lot of stuff wrong so uh I'll, i may give you some pointers and stuff but like don't <laughs> please don't please don't come in here and, and uh hate post on me for for doing things incorrectly in blender i am i am still learning very much i just want to have fun with making it and for people who may be intimidated by blender or want to give it a try and uh, think I could ever figure it out. Like, look, look, if your old pal Jum Jumington could figure it out, as dense and, and brain fogged as he is, then you can sort it out too. It's not, it's not that difficult. The basics anyway. I mean, it gets, it's like all of it. It gets more complicated the further you go. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's get started. I made this in like five minutes. I thought it would be funny. Hey, something. Welcome, welcome. Let's go ahead and start a new general. Let's go ahead and save that. May I, who knows? I may want to use that later. Um, I'm using Blender 4. Point. What is 4.0.2? And I, I have somewhat of an issue because almost everything. Hello, Otter. Otter Chaos. Welcome. I have somewhat of an issue because everything that I had been making in Blender was with a much older, like three point something, an old version. Because when I started working on stuff, that was uh, probably, that probably wasn't even the newest version. I downloaded, installed it, got scared, didn't touch it, and then a while later, I'm like, Nah, I'm gonna do this, and I came back and I did this, and I made this absolutely beautiful. Can't even wink properly. Absolutely beautiful, total sarcasm implied model you see before you, which was the very first thing that I made in Blender, um, which is kind of a crazy thing to start with when you think about it, because like that it's, it's there's a lot of complexity going on there. It may not look like it because I'm not very good at it, but uh, and I just never bothered to check for newer versions of Blender. I just kept working on it and building up everything you normally see in my backdrops and stuff. And then it finally occurred to me that like there were newer versions and I should check that out. Well, <laughs> the problem I found was that a lot of the stuff that I used for procedural texture generation and uh, 
That's pretty much that. Between shading differences and lighting differences, a lot of stuff didn't look the same. It didn't look right. Uh, and I was like, I'm not really sure how to fix that. And some of the things that are in my procedural, like, don't exist in the, the shading uh, bits anymore. They've been replaced. So, like, going back to the older version was kind of a headache. So a lot of the stuff that I do is stuck in an older version until I can sort out uh, how to make the textures look properly so that when I do new renders, uh, things look somewhat the same, or I just bite the bullet and redo everything uh, in the new version, re-render everything or do all the animations and all that. And that's that's kind of a bit addict. But for this, I, I'm jumping to uh, four and I'll deal with any kind of hassle of backpedaling I need to do. So uh, I, I have my buttons here. I'm gonna start some music and uh, if, see if I can find something so mildly appropriate. There's a lot of music I'd like to play that I don't want to tangle with potential uh, copyright strikes. <laughs> so I, I'm limited to, no, no, there's there's one. This is appropriate. <laughs> this is appropriate for this. For a little bit anyway. I'll, I'll try and switch this up so that we're not all getting brain rot from listening to the same thing over and over again. Um, so I, I have some uh, some buttons here that I set up to clear out, uh, if need be, the chat or myself, uh, if there's something you want to see over in, in this side, because chat's kind of kind of blocking that off. So I could just clear it up for a second and bring it and bring it back. I thought about doing something more with like some zooms or getting fancy with it, but it's not really meant to be instructional. I'm I'm not really uh, good enough to be a teacher for you. But uh, if you have any questions about anything, I will certainly try to answer them uh, to the best of my ability, and I'll try to explain what I'm doing while I go through and do it. So we're starting out with a fresh, uh, fresh new project here with the default cube i always laugh it seems like uh 99 of blender tutorials that start you off with the file the first thing they have you do is delete the default cube and i have watched quite a number of them where they have you delete the default cube and then immediately uh shift a to add a new cube and it's just kind of funny to me <laughs> it's like there's the default cube's not there's not something wrong with it it's just there it's just a cube it's nothing special about it let me get this screencast keys. There we go. Okay. Uh, I want to put the screencast keys on so that you can see what I'm doing more or less down over here. Uh, try to make it large enough so people can see if you're interested in that sort of thing. Oh, sweet cubes. Delicious cubes. My favorite, personally. All right. Well, I'm going to go over just just very simple a few simple basics uh with blender if you haven't used blender and you're curious about it so this is basically what you will look at when you fire up blender and a new project um what you have here in the defaults it adds in i'm already getting sick of this music i thought it was funny because <laughs> just the doofus but i need something i'll just go with the old standby piano there we go I spent, I spent like five to ten minutes today, I know, a real big effort, uh, mapping out like all the different BGMs that I had downloaded when I first started setting this up. Like, maybe I could use this, maybe I could use this. This is just a smorgasbord of royalty-free music I was grabbing that uh, I hardly ever use for anything. <laughs> but I, I finally set them all up on buttons here so I can go play play them all up it conveniently uh, fit on one one screen of the uh, the stream deck. So starting out the default, you have a cube. They call it the default cube. It's just a cube. It's not special. It's not broken. If, you, if you're not going to work with a cube, by all means, delete the cube. But like, you don't have to if you're going to be using a cube. I don't know why so many people do that. I think it's just that they're so used to it. But a lot of people will tell you to, to delete that and you're going to add something else. It's fine. You also have a camera. Yeah, so you think about this when you're rendering stuff. It all renders through a camera. Uh, and then a light, because you're not getting any light source, and they're just the default position. On the number pad, you can hit various keys in the number pad uh, to go to different views, mostly orthographic views, but zero will take you to the camera. So if you're going to render something, this is what you're going to see, the camera. You can add other cameras. You can move the camera. 
you can you can shift all that stuff around but that's good to keep in mind uh if you're lining something up putting out a do or under go look at the camera view you can adjust it uh and then various numpad cues go to orthographic views the front uh three is the side view seven is a top view if you hit uh control with that it'll go to the opposite so that's the front control that in the back it's very handy orthographic views are very handy because it takes out a lot of weird perspective tricks when you're trying to line something up particularly if you're using references you're going to want to use those orthographic views as much as possible so we're going to start out by getting a little bit organized here over here i'm going to create some collections first collection will be the ps2 reference images i'm going to use plenty of reference images it's a good idea uh to use reference images whenever you can can be hard to come by if you it's very good if you have the device um, have it handy and also take some pictures of it that you can put in here and help you line stuff up but it's good to have it in hand so you can eyeball it too you don't have to slavishly apply to reference images and one drawback if you go out on the internet and try and find random reference images for stuff particularly if it's like a vector drawing somebody made and you may think hey this is great because it's got all the angles i don't have to take pictures of it and carefully line all the stuff up everything's lined up be careful when you look at that because i've i have done a lot of things where i i have pulled a reference image off the internet because i was lazy i'm like i don't want to take pictures myself and then i get a significant way into working on the model and realize that the reference image has several inconsistencies and is wrong in several areas it's like well i mean it looks like a sega saturn but it's not exact you know, this is the Xbox 360. The IR sensor is in the wrong place. Maybe they drew that to get around some sort of copyright claim. I don't know. But if you're going for accuracy, get, get your own stuff. <laughs> or try and find something that's really well done. I've seen a lot of reference drawings where, like, stuff is just kind of subtly off. That was kind of a, oh, it's close enough. And then once you start modeling in 3D, you get further and further along. And it's like, that's not good. So we're going to make a collection. And collections just help you organize things and make it easier. Um, you place everything in there because this is going to fill up. This is all your objects in here. You, right now we've got the cube, camera light. It's going to fill up with stuff, so you want to keep it separated. Make uh, another one not inside of that collection. And that's going to be PS2. We'll just call, call it the PS2. And then I'm going to make one more collection. I'm just going to put uh, PS2 back up. And the purpose of this is as I'm going along here, I don't want it to be in the collection either. As I'm going along, you know, make some changes to this. You know, let's hit tab. We can go into, I select it, hit tab. We'll go into edit mode. And I'm just going to make a bunch of lines and stuff in here and put all over the place. Uh, and then I'm going to put modifier and don't worry if you don't know what's going on it's fine we'll just put a bevel on it and see it's got these nice bevel ledges you can control and then let's say i'm moving on and i want to apply this because right now this is what is called non-destructive modeling this is just a modifier and i these these bevels are not real real yet I can go and adjust these bevels. I can increase the amount of segments on the bevels to make it more or less rounded. Um, I can still go through and do that. And until I apply this modifier, it hasn't actually affected this. So that's non-destructive. But let's say something comes up and I, I need to apply this, which you cannot do in edit mode. Go back to object mode with tab and apply this. Now I can't change that. Now I'm stuck with this. And if I need to go back in later, and mess with something and this has this all this new uh all these new vertices vertices in here and now i can't put an edge loop all around the top of this and i've got some problems and if this is broken and these these bevels are messed up um you're in trouble so what a good solution is anytime you're going to do that just hit shift d to duplicate the object escape because that just you know puts it right in the same place and you can see it's this cube one. If we hide the base cube, we've got this cube one. Then you put that over in your backup. And you hide it. And now you can apply it and continue working on this. And if you get to a point where like, oh man, this is messed up. Like you can backpedal. You can backpedal. Most of what I am doing is non-destructive until I get to a point where I want to start collapsing things. 
and that will come. Uh, do -do. Delete that. We don't need that. So let's start off with bringing in some reference images. And I want to, I'll start with the top. So I'll go to the top view because it'll make it easier when you add this in. Shift A, we'll add an object. We're going to go to image reference. And I've got some, to, don't spy on my folder names. That's fine. You're not going to see any special one there go to my reference materials console references got a lot and these are pictures i took and edited earlier let's get the top and so now you can kind of line this up and this is where you decide like the scale of the the object you want to make if you want to get real fancy um, you can measure your device and then make your objects that size uh, using scale or um, object dimensions right now this is a two meter cube so I can go through and change it if you have multiple numbers like this you can click on one and drag down and then, then you can affect all of them at the same time that's very handy for keeping things square so let's say I want to make this you know 50 meters now it's 50 meters across obviously PlayStation 2 is not 50 meters but you could get real precise with that I'm not doing that I'm not doing it. I'm just going to go off of this, but I think I will scale this down just a little bit. This image. So I'm going to hit S to scale and put it right about there. And I'll go up here and toggle X ray so I can see through it. And this will be our, our start. Now, you can already see anyone with, with good eyes. This is not like a perfect perspective view of the PlayStation. So it's wider at the bottom and this is at the top here. It's fine. That's fine. So we're not going for ultra precision. I'm just trying to get something close to the PlayStation 2. Uh, and then the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to select the cube, edit it. In fact, I'm going to rename this to PS2 base for now. I'm going to go on to uh, put that into the uh, PS2. You go into tab mode, A to select all, or you can also use box select. Now, if you don't have x-ray toggled and you go to select something, it's only gonna select the topmost point. You wanna see, we won't get in this other stuff. Oh, you know what? I need to clear all these out. Alt and right click. I use right click to select. Alt and right click. I can just select one line. I can hit Alt and right click and it'll select the entire loop. And then Shift to select another one, Alt, right click. I'm just gonna select all of these and get rid of these because I don't want them yet. And then X and it just dissolved. No, that'll get rid of them. X to complete, nope. Uh, edge loops, that's what I want because those are edge loops. Okay, so now we got back to the base cube. Maybe I should have deleted the cube. So set this to vertices. You have vertices, your select mode is up here. Vertices, line, or face, which you can also use the number keys, not on the number pad, but on the, your regular number key row, one, two, and three. One is vertices, two is lines, three is faces. So second vertices, we've got them all selected. And we're just going to scale this down. Let's start with X, which is basically your side to side. Just kind of line that up. That's pretty good. We'll scale Y, which is your front to back. And you can see it's going to not fit in because it's not centered. So we're going to grab with G, Y, to move that in. And then you can just grab this back row here. Grab that and bring it up. And that's probably close enough. It doesn't have to be super duper precise. Um, it's okay if it's off by a bit, as long as you know what it is. Now I'm going to grab everything in this queue, in this cube, grab it G, Z to pick the axis. I'm gonna move that up. So it's up in the air there. And I'm actually going to 
get back in object mode. I'll grab this image and move it down further. And you can move it as far away as you like. Because that way when you're circling around to work on something, you don't have it in your way as much. Of course, you could just hide it too. But you see when you go to the orthographic view, because there's no real perspective, that hasn't changed the size of it all, no matter how, how far away it's gone. All right. So we've got back view. If you hit the uh, decimal on the number pad, it will zero in on your selected object. And if, if I'm getting too too out there with explanations or anything, or or you just don't want to hear, let me know. Like I said, you just talk while I while I work. Um, so we're gonna start adding the other reference images in another reference image. And we will take the front. That's good. Grab this. Just kind of drive it around. And then scale it down. Now, the reason that I started with one and kind of set the size on that. Z, grab X, I decide. So when I get the other pictures, because they're not all in the same image, they're not pre-scaled to the same thing. I can have a better chance of lining it all up so that things mostly line up properly. Looks like it's scale a little bit more. Now let's go back. That scale was probably decent. Poking out. Well, that's just a shadow. It is poking out a little bit, but that's pretty that's pretty good. That's close. It's off by just a just a touch because again I didn't get a perfect straight on image. And that's good enough for our purposes here. Let's go to a side view and you can see it's right in the middle there. We don't want that. I'll grab that on the y-axis and slide that way back. You can even go further back than that. that front view all right back to the cube and just kind of line this up yeah like I said if you know not why Z doesn't have to be perfectly perfectly precise this is an engineering work um, I keep grabbing it Y That's plenty. We're going to ignore the feet, those little rubber feet down there. We're going to ignore that for now because that'll be a separate thing. And starting out, you just want to get like a basic shape in before you start worrying about all the little details and insets and everything. So now we've got pretty much the size just from those two images, right? We've got, we've got pretty well like the base dimensions locked in. Let's get to the side view. This would be the side top, I believe is what I called it. Make sure you're in object mode. Reference. Yep. Side top. And this is in the wrong orientation, but that's fine. We'll just get that R to rotate it. And this would rotate on the Y axis. Oop. Rotate on the X axis or 10 X minus 90 degrees. There we go. Grab it on Z. Scale it in. Now there's an extra bit hanging off right here. And I'm not going to model that. I'm going to model that separately. That is the um, network slash hard drive adapter for the PS2, excuse me. Crack open a fresh protein slurry. Ah, delicious, keep my old voice box for kidding. So I'm gonna ignore this chunk off the back here. And this is also why it's good to have either better reference images than I took or have the object in hand because if we I'm gonna hide the uh, cube here, 
if you look at it this from this angle you might be inclined to think that the this top part here extends further back than this and that's not really the case this does have a slight yeah, but it's not straight up and down it's not a straight right angle here um but this here i'm, I'm looking at pick mine up it's on the shelf that is attached to the microphone so sorry for thumps and bumps but i'm looking at it and like that cuts off right at this line so i'm going to trust this angle approximately as being correct and then just work on assuming this line goes straight up and down and it will be it will be close enough it'll be close enough it is really odd i'm looking at this there's a not insignificant gap in that network adapter because just like the front this does go in just a little bit just a touch and so when they go together the network adapter is completely flat and so there's a weird little gap there and what that is if you're not familiar with the playstation 2 and hey i wouldn't blame you it's, it's a pretty damn old system at this point uh the original playstation 2 playstation 2 fat not the slim playstation 2 which i also own and it's a decent system playstation 2 fat had an optional accessory that attached to the back of it that uh added dial-up modem or uh ethernet both really i think there's some versions that that didn't have both uh and this way you could connect it to the internet and there were uh i think final fantasy the i forget what number it is the first final fantasy mmo was on the the ps2 and the way they facilitated that is the other thing this this network adapter did was it had a ide connection for an ide hard drive now thankfully these days you can get a board that that changes that to sata although uh the speeds are not really any faster <laughs> accounting for newer hard drive speeds so you can have a nice new sata drive in there nice fast ssd it's not going to do anything faster not really um and that that fits into this area here this is hollow through here and it's big enough to fit an old big fat uh three and a half inch hard drive which now like ssds or even back then you could put a laptop drive in there with an adapter and you could put an ssd in there and it takes up like this much space <laughs> so you just get this big empty area here but in the old days of mechanical drives that was like you had to have that space you had to have plenty of ventilation to keep it cool it's pretty crazy uh so before the xbox you know the xbox I feel like really normalized a lot of that and then other consoles have followed suit since then the playstation 3 and 4 and 5 and pretty much everything after the xbox has uh internal storage unless you're in nintendo nintendo has internal storage but then it's like here's some tiny little flash around for you so yeah i just want to take a look at that i'm gonna set this down here next to me so i don't have to bump into something physically connected to this microphone so that is not i'm going to model that separately i may or may not do that today but i will do that before i add the ps2 to my stream setup because i do use that um you don't have to you could model it as just one thing and just kind of inset this and call it a day you know that's just my my preference on this so let's bring this back this scaled up so you're already seeing some weirdness here because this height in this image doesn't necessarily correspond to this height so now I gotta decide which one I want to trust. Probably maybe the other one. Because this one I can definitely tell is not head on based on different gap in that. This is more head on in a different way. So I'm gonna thin this up a little bit. Oh, yeah, more stonesy. Go with the side one. Could be wrong. 
could be mistaken. Could cause me grief later. Let me think about that for a sec. Yeah, because when it comes to modeling, more of the front stuff, I can, you know, I can line it up multiple ways to get that thickness. Um, maybe I'll try and take a better a better shot of it from an angle where it's on, on a table because it's sitting on its back and it does kind of wobble a little bit. Uh, the other thing that you may see in this is this fan shroud, which is not stock. Since this also kind of pokes out weirdly there. That is a 3D, 3D printed adapter that allows you to add a um, thicker aftermarket fan because the PlayStation 2 fan was pretty loud. And when you want to record stuff or just, you know, have less noise, it's nice to have a quieter fan. So you, you put a uh, Noctua fan in there, which are pretty quiet. I've heard some debate. I've heard a lot of debate on it. Uh, for various reasons. Uh, one is the, the voltage coming out of the PlayStation is not uh, your standard fan voltage, although you can get fans, current fans that are built for that. Um, two, that the airflow is less off the Noctua fan. It's quieter, it has less airflow. Um, even at higher speeds, it's still a little bit quieter than the stock fan, but you don't generally run it that way. You generally run it at a lower, lower speed, lower airflow, less noise. Um, and there's some arguments that it won't properly cool uh, cool the PlayStation 2. I have not found that to be the case, uh, but I haven't, you know, done the extensive testing uh, that maybe some other people have. I see similar uh, reports. A lot of consoles have this. The GameCube has this. The Dreamcast has this. Uh, I haven't seen people put different fans in an Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 sounds like a friggin' jet, jet engine firing off when I power that thing up, and it really doesn't get colder. That's the only one that I wouldn't want to mess with fans on because it's it's a hot it's a hot boy so I don't want to mess with it. The PS2, Dreamcast, and GameCube are pretty good, pretty good with different fans. I didn't do anything to. I think I bought a fan for the GameCube, but I didn't actually end up putting it in because uh, I didn't. I was able to position it in a place that it didn't bother me as much. And same for the Dreamcast, I was okay with it. I figured I'd revisit that later. But when I was working with the PlayStation 2, which is one of the first consoles that I started working on in the past uh, year and a half, uh, I couldn't stand the noise. I'm like, surely, surely there's a better way. I'm also not going to model that right now. I'm going to model it based off the stock back. And then I'll probably, you know, make that a separate piece and put this on there. When I put stuff in uh, my, my stream background, I, I try to make it accurate to what I have. That's that's why my NES has a yard sale sticker on it, and it's a little bit yellowed, because that's what I got. And, I, and that's just for me. That's just some fun. Um, you'll never know. <laughs> I could be lying about owning any of these. I'm not, but I could be. You'll never know. So where are we at here? Those. Let's get this side. Where are... I should name these. This is going to be the top. Top, not wrap. Top ref. Which would make this the front. And this is the side top. I just kind of arbitrarily decided on these. All right, let's get out of edit mode and go to side top. We'll scooch this guy back this way and then we will go this way I'm gonna hide that for right now and add the other one the side bottom and then the back modified back is what I have Okay, rotate X, rotate X minus 90. So you rotate things, you can pick a uh, axis to rotate them in, and you can put a number in and rotate it that way. It's very handy. And 
this is the bottom. The perspective on this is also not perfect. But we will basically just kind of average out everything that we have. Maybe I'm wrong about that bottom. Because once we start putting lines in, like, we can line these up easier. Yeah, I'm gonna backpedal on this. I'm gonna grab this back down. And then we'll compare it to this one. It looks closer to that. So maybe that other one. I don't know. They can, because the picture I took standing up, depending on how angled I was. This is a pretty straight. Not totally straight. A little bit straighter. We'll go with this. Go with this. Lines up fairly well. And then we'll do the same thing with this. Name this to side bottom. And then we'll move that way off that way. All right. And then I'm going to just bring in some other images that we're not going to use to line things up but are nice to have in here. Uh, do, do. Bottom, right, bottom. I mean, nope, not that. That's, that's some random thing I found off the internet, and that one was... I don't want to use it because uh, it's just copy and paste off of a site for something that was actually for sale, so I'm not comfortable throwing that up on stream and being like, yeah, use this. Like, don't pay for it. Um, if I was going to use it, I would pay for it. Uh, hard drive bay. Could put that over there. And this is the hard drive bay. You can see that's where an old giant mechanical drive would go. There's a connector. I got some screws here. Where it screws in. Some flimsy little, uh, screws. Stock back. My visual reference, and also has the expansion bay door, which is a little door that fit on there. I don't recall what these screws were for. I don't know if they made something for this that attached back here, like a cord cover or something. It may have just been there for like a kiosk use or something. It does have that, right? Yeah, yeah I do have those there. I'm sure there was some device that attached to that that I never owned. Um, you can see we got the fan. And it's all pretty flush. It's pretty flush up there. But this is actually, there's a sticker here. It's gone on mine. <laughs> it's long gone. That's the tamper-proof sticker. Um, <clears throat> I don't think in the, it was just in the past couple of years. Maybe it's longer because, you know, my frame of time is always off. But this was ruled that uh, this doesn't actually stand true. The uh, warranty void of broken seals. Uh, I think people push hard enough that they're able to make that kind of null and void so that you can't have these stickers on and tell people that your warranty is void because you opened it up, which is nice. I understand why they did that, but um, yeah, I, mine's just gone. Uh, but you can still see the lines here where this separates. There's the gap between the top and bottom plastic pieces. This piece here that contains the fan and the power switch and the power input that is one piece there's one plastic piece that fits in there um it might be two i don't think it's two i think this is all one i'm trying to remember when i when i trade changed mine out i probably have it somewhere around i can go dig it out and look at it too for reference that's all one piece that pops out of there so it'll be easier to go in when i'm separating this if i want to do all the detail in the back which is something i'm going to come back to um, I can make this a separate object and just replace it with the other one and, re and reuse a lot of this stuff. And basically all I'm going to do is rough up the, 
surface of it and add a big fan box. If I do that. Uh, anything else? Let's see if there's another reference I want to put in here. I don't think there is. Uh, oh, I do want the modified back. Might as well line that up now. And I think that's it for the references. Yep. Let's rotate that. Y180. Still have the sticker on it. I have connected it to my network um, to test stuff, but it didn't really, <laughs> didn't really do anything that I wanted it to. And I ultimately gave up on it because the network speed is so slow. I think, I think it was like uh, 10 megabit, not like a hundred megabit, gigabit or anything. And when you're trying to transfer like files over it, like, no, <laughs> no. Cause I, I use, uh, I back up all my disks to the hard drive. Um, and it was just easier. I don't, actually, I've never really looked into it. Some, some game systems that have, uh, ways to load custom firmware or alternate boot methods uh, will allow you to back up your games on the console which is nice like the gamecube i use uh an sd it's not an sd gecko sd something it's an sd card loader that fits one of the expansion slots in the bottom which is nice because i retain my disk drive and i boot off of swiss and then i can back up my real actual legitimate gamecube discs directly onto the sd card through swiss which is very nice uh, the Wii has that ability also. I don't think this does. I'm not sure. I just use my computer. Or a, a computer. Because my main computers don't have optical drives anymore. But I still own an old computer that has an optical drive. And I use that to, to back up my disks. And then I put them on a hard drive. You're going to go. All right. Catch you later, Monkey Maniac. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, God will be up when I'm up if you're interested. Otherwise, I'll, uh, I'll catch you on the next one. I keep forgetting... I, for, I was so addled last night that I forgot um, tomorrow uh, wrapping up Mario, trying to wrap up Mario RPG. I got my butt kicked by the final, final, final boss of the post-game content. I may have to do some grinding um, and we'll see how long that takes. And then that will, that will knock that out. Free up a spot for something else. Um, probably do Phasmophobia next week on Sunday. I haven't done one in a while. That's it. Thanks for coming by. Catch you later. Um, so yeah, I, I load all the stuff off the hard drive. Um, that way I don't have to mess with the disc. I don't have to worry about the laser failing, all that. Uh, but transferring games to it, it I found it's just easier to just take this thing out and slap the hard drive back up to a computer and move stuff over. It's a lot quicker. This is how most projects that I work on start with a lot of fiddling around with reference images to try and get things lined up as cleanly as possible. It's easier if you have reference images that have already been laid out and lined up and matched up with something else. And I didn't do that. I just kind of put these wherever. I'll slide this way out front. Okay. So now I got this wild buffet. Let's move that way out there. Let's move that way out there. You can always find them later. And let's move from this way out there as well nope h hides things that's not what i wanted to do it's fat fingering things all right so now we've got a decent amount of references i'm going to hide um which one is this it's the drive bay Bay ref. Good to label things. That's the stock fan ref. And this would be the um, front or the, the back. Yep. Do, do, do. Just going to call that back ref. 
I'll hide the background. I'll leave those there. The top is fine. Um... Here. So the first thing I'm going to just start laying down some loops here and we'll start cutting in the base shape of this. So control R, I'm not in edit mode. Edit mode is what you need to be in. Control R, give you some loops. You can mouse wheel up or down to increase the number of loops. I'm just going to do one for right now and I'm just going to line it up on this side and then we will go to this side and that's lined up pretty good uh let's get the it's the side bottom that's lined up pretty well on uh, most of them so i'm pretty satisfied with that 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 is where the edges and these images are lined up well enough that we can work with it so that's the first now let's put one in here that's approximately where that splits off we can go to control one to view the back and we'll bring the back ref up hide the front ref Oh, that's why. Let's rotate this Z 180. Nope, that's not it. That's not what I want to do. Ding, ding, ding. Rotate that Z 180. It was backwards because I'm looking at it from the back. So now you can see I'm starting to run into a thing here where this is not quite lining up here between the front and the back. It doesn't really overhang it. And decide. I'm gonna trust the front more, I think, because if I look at the back, the angle on it is making this obscure. It it's probably about there. It's just angled weirdly. Because again, it was sitting weird, like it's not meant to sit on its front. So it was sitting kind of weird holding it with one hand and trying to take the picture with the other. So I'll stick for that for right now. And that will take care of this chunk here. And then does it actually No. That's pretty much stock on the front. So this is, you know, Another area where the perspective will throw it off. So we may go through this because my references are kind of shoddy. Um, let me get to the end of this and decide it looks subtly off. That's fine. I can always go back and adjust things later. But this, for instance here, this is a trick of perspective. Um, this actual edge, because this is the bottom that it can stand on, this edge is actually flush with this. It just looks like it isn't. So I'm happy with enough with that. Uh, and then the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in where this line is. Maybe a little bit excessive. But that will help when I set these in. 
how far that gap is. I'll do the same thing over here. If I wanted to get real fancy with it, um, nope. I'll get real fancy with it. I could have gotten rid of this, put one in the middle, and then moved it equidistant along the side, and then it would be an equal distance from the sides. And in fact, I think I may do that. So I can be super, super crazy with it. So let's get rid of edge loops there. Can always get rid of these later. Just gonna drop this here. You can slide around if you hit escape, it just leaves it in the center. Um, was it shift control R? And that will give us one on each side equally out of it. So that wherever we line these up, it is an equal spacing on either side. And that will help with the symmetrical look of it. And then we'll put this one back over here. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's go to a side view. Get rid of the side bottom. And I'll do the same thing on here. And this should cut all the way across the other side as well. So line this up. Not where we want it. Okay. And then one more. This. Right here. Where these end. That will, oop. that will help us line that up as well. And that basically, it's very close. If I put it about here, the, the little bit of gap that you can see between this line here, if you can see it, this line here and this line here, will mostly be eaten up by um, a bevel around off that edge, and that will take some of that away. And that will look good enough for me. But I'm going to put this line here because it'll make it easier. Let me send this out. Now, you can't see it really, really well, probably, in this picture. So when we're talking about these indents for these fins here, which I have to cut in in a sec. And there's lots of ways to do this stuff, too. Um, you don't have to do it the way that I'm doing it. Some people might would just do some of this stuff just with a bunch of Booleans. Um, when I will do plenty of stuff with a, a Boolean. I'll explain what that is when I get to it. Um, but I'm just going to use loops to cut this stuff in. And that will give us, at least I think, a little bit better uh, handle on topology. But you can't really see right here um, so much, but this isn't the depth on this. is pretty uniform around this corner to here, but it goes up, and it's only slightly indented here. On the other side of it, uh, you can see from like that image, it is straight in. So it's something to keep in mind when we going through this. All right, so we've got some base cuts in there. Let's cut in this area. Go to face select. And I don't want to do x-ray because I just want to get these. Let's box select all of those. And I'm going to be cutting, and this might get a little bit tricky because we could end up with some overlapped duplicate verts, vertices, which will make things ugly. So because I've got this extra stuff here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in to here. I'm going to extrude it inward to here and then extrude there to there, and that will give us that nice indent. So I'm going to get Alt-E. You can extrude with E. Which just extrudes this out. But you can see if I go in, it's leaving this here. We don't want that. We don't want that. And there's ways around that. You could just line it up and then delete that face later. That gets kind of messy. Someone hit escape. I'm actually going to undo. Because even though it looks like nothing happened, if we look in our undo history, we've got extrude region. That region is still there. If I grab that with X and pull that out, it's not dragging everything else. That's still there. So that's something that 
I do a lot. But I, I'm only pointing this out because oh, I hid. Bring the bring the chat back up just so you can see because I don't need to hide that yet. Uh, that's something that I do a lot when I'm working with stuff, and I'll extrude something and see how it works. Like, no, nah, I don't want that and escape, and I'll forget about it. And it's actually still there. There's actually two two faces here. It's created a duplicate set of vertices and lines and faces and whatnot. And it's just directly over the other one. So we'll make sure we go to undo history and back to box select. So there's nothing there. Now, if I grab that, you can see it drags it out because it's not extra. It's all still connected there. Okay. We're going to use alt E and extrude manifold. And that will cut out that extra stuff. And that's pretty well lined up there. I'm going to grab that and see. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty well lined up. I should have auto merged that together. So basically just get rid of that. So now if I extrude this again, Alt E, extrude manifold again, we should get a pretty clean line. And if we take it right up to the line, let's see here. Nope. I remember I take it back to the last extrude manifold. I want to be able to see this line pretty well. Oh, you extrude manifold. That should be good. I'm gonna grab that. Check it. It's a good test if you're not sure what you have created to grab this stuff. Because if this was a separate face it would move out like if i hit uh extrude on this and just kind of escape and then i grab it and go over the place whereas now it's not extruded it's extruded still now okay now it's all interconnected because that can affect your rendering uh so I'm going to go through, I'm going to put this on, render some material on this right now. So we've got the basic PlayStation 2 shape. And I should say, at this point, you could be done. You could probably be done before this. I'm going to show you a couple levels on how to do this stuff. Real half-baked ways. And then I'm going to you know, continue working on and do it for real. So how far you want to go and how much you want to care about your topology in this and how everything lines up is really, really depends on what you're using it for. If you just want to render an image and it's not getting deformed, which means like this box isn't going to be, you know, wiggled around like a piece of rubber. Um, you don't have to worry too much about it. And it's probably a terrible thing to say because you really should worry somewhat. You should strive if you're learning the, how to do this. If you want to continue doing it, you should, you should try to learn proper topology and get it as close as possible and, and learn how to do that stuff well, well enough, right, uh, at the start. Because that way the things you make will be easier to transfer into something else. Like, hey, I made this in Blender, but what if I brought it into Unity or Unreal or Godot or any other, you know, 3D uh, adjacent tools? And if you make it all wrong, you may find you bring in those other things and the whole thing just falls apart and it looks hideous and everything looks messed up. Uh, at the bare minimum, you want to make sure things look right when you go to render them. And they won't look right if they have a bunch of weird doubled up vertices all over the place and stuff looks kind of janky. Um, but how far you want to go with details on it, how far you want to go in terms of how many uh, vertices you put, how many edges you put on it, how close you're getting things. It's really just a matter of what you do with it. If you're just making a render, you can you can cut a lot of corners if you want, <laughs> just to just to get something put together. Half of the things that I make are like that uh, the Simpsons meme that's like Homer from the front looks really skinny, and then it, in the back it shows all of his extra skin pinned together. That's what a lot of my models look like. If you rotate them all around, you'll find a spot that's just like. Don't look under there. That's where all the extra junk I couldn't deal with just got shoved away. Um, I see something right now that may or may not cause us issues. We want this loop. This loop should go all the way through. All right? Because what we have right now, if we look at our vertices view, on this, this face here, 
One, two, three, four, five. And that's what's called an end gun. You want to have quads. You want four vertices on a face. You don't want to have end guns, which is more than four. You don't want to have tries, which is three. Really, if you only had two, you really wouldn't have anything. You had at least three. A lot of a lot of 3D games, I think PlayStation used tries. A lot of stuff uses triangles. But if you export something from Blender to it, it'll, you know, depending on the tool, it'll triangulate itself. Um, in Blender, you want to use quads. You want to make sure everything's quads. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Sometimes you just can't get it. And as long as it works, it's fine. You, you, it may give you trouble later. You generally want to avoid that. And this can happen when you're doing what I'm doing. Right, and we're extruding this stuff and move this line. Because the line that was there, technically, is here now. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit K. I don't know if this is the proper way to do it. This is what I would do. K to use the knife tool. And we're going to cut across. And you can see these green dots as where it's adding vertices. We're going to go all the way down to that one. And hit enter. And now that's all connected. And now all of these faces are proper quads. So we go to work with them. They're quadded up properly. Now all this is going to go to hell once I start adding detail and with booleans. And it's going to go straight straight down to the toilet. Uh, but what a lot of people would do at, at a point like this is they may go to a modifier to add extra uh, detail or smooth out the edges. And they may add a subdivision surface modifier. And you can see it's made this real round and blobby. Because what the subdivision surface is adding all kinds of extra geometry to this. That you can't see yet. But if I were to apply this, because I and I will, because I can undo it. If I were to apply this subdivision surface up to two, that's a more normal one. You can see like these edges became rounder, smoother. Or just, there's a gradient there. If you apply this, you'll see, it be in object mode. We go back into edit mode. You can see it's added a whole lot of extra geometry. And some of this isn't that great. Because these are real uneven. And these are awful close together. Some of these. And some of these, like, yeah, that's a quad. But, like, that looks rough. They're going to look kind of kind of weird. It's okay. That's passable. Um, but that's what a lot of people do. Let's go back to that not being applied. And then what you can do uh, is you can put edge loops in and drag them out to surfaces. And that will kind of smooth them over. Because I've got a bunch of edge loops on that end already. It's already squared up. That's why this side is more squared up than this side. If I throw an edge loop on here and drag it back, you can see the effect it has. And that's subdivision modeling. And if you're making stuff that's real smooth, that's what a lot of people will do. But I'm not making stuff that's real smooth here. Now, if you're working on like the Xbox or Sega Saturn or Dreamcast or something that has some rounded edges, like the Dreamcast kind of domes up where the disc tray is, the disc drive, the, the cover, the door, whatever you want to call it, the lid kind of domes up, that's a good way to do it. Because like... Just grabbing the square here and saying, like, here's my disc, disc door. There you go. That'll look kind of not right. So that's looking good there. So let's let's finish this, <laughs> sort of, in a manner of speaking, by putting a material on it. Material is what it, it resembles. Uh, you can call it a texture, but a mater material for this is more accurate. The one thing I'm going to do, because I did make some cuts in that, and I'm going to go up to this view, and I'm going to check this face orientation. And everything should be blue, which means it's an outside face. Sometimes when you're working with stuff, uh, we're in object mode, right? Let's add a plane. I've seen this. This is where I, I usually see this come up. The mesh plane, which is just a flat two, 2D plane. You can see it's got a back side and a front side. Red is the back side. All right. If I were to edit this plane and extrude this out, depending on which way, and if you're rotating it around, you may not remember which side was the front. If you don't have this turn, you won't know. And then, so you might extrude that out, and then you're putting some loops in it, right? 
and then you're making some extrusions. You're getting crazy with it, right? You're like, oh, great. Because that's another thing I see people do a lot. They start with a plane and they shape things out and move it. And that's fine. That works fine. As long as you check this stuff. Because right, what you have right now is you have a box that thinks it's inside out. All of those red sides think they're outside facing. All right. So if I turn this off. Try and render this. You might get weird lighting. And it won't be really apparent. totally apparent when you don't have the material on it. All right. When there's nothing on it, let's give this a color and it may all look fine. Right. But eventually you're going to have to deal with lighting on it and it's going to look messed up because it's, it thinks the sides are wrong. Now you can fix that easily. Go to edit mode and select all and let's show that again. I know I said I'm not doing this to be instructional, but like these are things that when you're starting out, you might run into and be very confused about and get very frustrated and spend a bunch of time chasing after things that like, oh, why do I have these weird dark shadows? Why do I have these weird dark spots? And this is a likely reason. This is something to look out for. Um, I didn't know this when I was messing with stuff and I went back through. I got very far along before I was like ripped things apart because the lighting was wrong and then i realized the faces are the right way if you select everything you can shift n it'll, re it'll recalculate and now everything is the correct way but we don't want that anyway so let's give this thing a material we'll call this p is too lazy and i'm just gonna slap uh, my reference images onto this as a texture. And if you were just trying to make something really quick, why that would probably work because you can get pretty crazy with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with one. So this is the shader menu. And I have an add on installed. I highly recommend if you want to work with blender. And, I, and I'm saying this to the people who, who don't know more than me, right? <laughs> who might be interested in checking out Blender and trying it out. These are, these are my, my tips and pointers for you. Um, it'll, you'll see it in most tutorials if they talk about shading. They will recommend adding Node Wrangler. You can add add-ons by going to Edit Preferences and Add-ons. You can just search Node Wrangler, which I thought I already had may not be necessary or may just not have been turned on strange anyway um and node wrangler just lets you do this stuff like this there's some other things that lets you do that, that are fancier than i work with but you can shift a to add new modes without having to go to add and go through all this it's a little bit just a little bit quicker i like it let's search for an image texture and that will be the color and then we need to give it coordinates, the so texture coordinate. Give it a UV. And I'm going to get this front image and that'll be the texture. And you can see it looks totally, totally messed up. Horrific, but that's fine because it has no UV and UV is how it determines where the texture lines up you can see these are my faces those faces line up to this over here it's a hot mess so there's better ways to do it. if i had crunched all of these images together i could do it all in one it's all going to be separate now per side because i'm going nuts and this is the super lazy way to do it but i'm going to hit u on the edit side here i'm going to project from view which will give us pretty much this exactly as we see it, just what we see in this view. And then I'm going to go over here and select these and scale this. I can go over here and set this up so we can see, and I'm going to hide the reference images. We 
don't have to be real slavish to what we got here. We can get real terrible with it. You can get real ugly. Ooh. I have extra vertices over here. I got a lot of weird overlappy stuff going on here. This looks absolutely hideous, and it should, because this is not the right way to do it. <laughs> this is not a way to do it that is good. But I'm just having some fun here. And then the space. All lined up. All right. It's one of my reference images weren't hiding because I never actually put the references images in the reference image collection. I'll fix that now. The nice thing about doing that is when you have them in a collection you can just hide the collection and it will hide everything you don't have to go through it individually set them off all right well it looks awful from the back and like this is a real thing here with these lines but like it's not terrible it's not well i was gonna say I have to keep retracting what I'm saying. It's not the worst. It's not the worst thing you could see. Now, we're not done. I'm not stopping here. I just want to make that clear. I just wanted to show you if you're starting out and you're just looking to make something or you're not interested in going real deep into it and you're just like, look, I wanted to make a box that has a look and then I'm going to toss it in something else and use it. I just want to make like a, a 30 second meme video. I don't want to become a 3D modeler, blah, blah, blah. Like, hey, you could do it. Here's this. Let's look at, let's look at our camera view. All right, the camera's not in a great spot for this. So let's go ahead and select the camera. Camera's interesting because it's at an angle. So if I hit grab and Z, that line is where it's, it's moved. But if you hit Z a second time, you can zoom in and out. Let's grab Z, we'll move it up. Uh, zoom it in. That's pretty good. The light is just kind of wherever. So we're going to render this. All right. Now, if you went through and did the other textures with other sides, you'd get a little bit different, a little bit better result. But like, we've all seen this, right? We've all seen this in like little indie games games that are meant to evoke like the ps1 style graphics and they'll have stuff like this this was like kind it's like max Payne, right the first max Payne they used people's photographs and that's how you do it that's that's for someone's face you'd make make the mesh and then stretch it stretch it out on there and we can go through and do you know, other sides on this, we can um, select that and go into edit mode. And we can select, uh, let's select just the top faces. It should be just the faces on top, All right? And you can have multiple materials per object. Um, if you want to export stuff, you may want to clean clip down on that. I won't get into that too much in this. What I'll say is a lot of the, the textures that I'm making work fine when you're in Blender. 
when you want to take them out and put it in something else like Unreal Engine or Unity or whatever, you're going to have to do some work past that to get on there. Um, cause like, this is, you know, this is just an image with a UV. It's got a UV. It's got the image. So if I export this model, that UV will remain, right? And then I just tell it, Hey, here's this image and the UV is already lined up and it will appro look approximately like this. If I have like 20 different images or I add some extra stuff in here, which I will get to when I get further along in the model, I might, I might start off with that just so you can see it in case you don't aren't able to stick around and you're curious about it. Um, the procedural generated stuff in this won't really export. You'll have to do what's called baking. You have to bake the color and the normals and everything. Uh, onto there. Baseline Blender is kind of a pain to do that. There's an add-on which I'm probably going to buy after I finish the stream tonight for like $18-$20 that's supposed to speed it up because I, I really want to do that because every time I go to work on uh, my background I've got a growing number of objects with increasingly complex procedural generated um, textures on them and it's got to it's got to calculate that stuff and it takes a couple minutes to get everything up to where I can work on it. And if I just bake those things down, I'm, I believe it will be quicker. I hope it'll be quicker. And then I can export them and do other stuff with them. I could, make, I could make it so that I can hold a console in my 3D model's hand. I don't know if I will do that, but I could. Anyway, so what we can do is we can select these faces, go to the material, right? Let's create another material. I'm just going to duplicate that, but I'm going to click this here to make a new material that's a copy of that and names it for it. We'll just call this lazy, lazy top. Somewhere on the lazy top. And basically we're just going to change the image. All right. So now that's using the top and we're going to assign that to those. And then we'll go back to UV editing, take our top view. Same as we did before you project from view and then select everything here and just scale it and this one will be a little bit simpler just scale it down a little bit you can cheat a lot when you're doing things this way you can rotate you can stretch it um, you could do something like take this face right and just move it over here and this is where you want it to be and then you can take this face and just like scale it and put every other face just on some random plastic piece here now that that kind of rough gritty pattern won't quite line up you can see but like it's passable and that and if you did that you could also cut down on this and this is how a lot of um a lot of textures in older games might do it where they would have like this logo or, or like a face that had to be really detailed would be like this one big section. And then everything else was like the clothes would just be like, here you go. Here's your pants. All of your pants are just this repeated. But that's, that's not bad. It's the whole thing covered. You got the logo on it. All right. And there you go quick and dirty the back is is not right but you get it i don't want to spend all all my my days on that i mean you could just you can look at this you can see how bad the perspective was on my camera by how weirdly angled those things are um we could fix this we got some doubling up going on there but that's like how close are you going to see it you know from like this distance that's a that's a passable playstation 2 for a simple setup. That's not what we want. <laughs> That's not what we want at all. That's not what I'm gunning for. But like, I don't know. It's got a, it's got some charm to it, you know. And uh, and there you go. You've got something that's that's set and done. You you might not even if you understand things a little bit more than me, you might not even have to cut this section out. You could probably do that with um some other effects so that you just have like a block and it just cuts that out but go big or go home that's my view go something or go home all right let's uh let's put a real texture on all of this right 
So we can go here, we can select this. We're gonna assign it uh, to a new texture, which I'm going to name new PS2 Black Grit. And the reason I'm, I'm naming it that is um, I may not have to make another one, but you can look at, at this image right here. You can tell there's, it's got a texture to it. It's not smooth black plastic. It's got a gritty texture to it. It's not quite to the level of a Super Famicom. Super Famicom has, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is about the same. It seems a little bit finer, right? But I'm, I'm looking at this. And like the top is very clearly that texture, right? But the bottom, pretty smooth. You know, the flat, the flat parts of it, the lower part of the plastic, pretty smooth. Uh, on the sides, anyway. So we're likely gonna have for black areas two different textures that we're using for this. Um, so let's name everything and assign it to this. And we'll go to our shading. And now we're going to do some procedural stuff. Just a little bit. Just a touch. Just a taste. And we're going to start off with... Um, what do we start with? Let's start with a texture coordinate. I'm just going to be using the object. Let's add a noise texture. We're going to be scaling it way up. And that, this will give us that graininess. Just give it that object. Let's add a, it used to be called mix RGB and I think it's just mix color unless there's yet another uh, anon for it. I wanna take the factor out of that noise factor and put it into the factor here. And the factor is how much these two colors mix, All right? So I'm gonna go with a, not all the way black, what you would call Vanta black. Cause you're not gonna find something that's really like blacker than black so black it it swallows the sun um just a little bit less black than that fairly fairly dark um you can suit this to your taste if you have a reference image uh you could try to sample a color off of that now granted this has got weird lighting it's all goofy and messed up. Um, so what kind of light color you'll get off of it. See, those are very light gray. Obviously, this isn't very light gray. Let's try back off of this. So it's a darker gray. See, I think it's darker than that. But we're going to mix it because we can always darken this up later. I'm going to go a bit darker. But I'm also going to take like a, a purplish blue. I'm going to make it very dark. I'm just going to see how this looks. Put our factor in there, which determines how far that goes. We'll spit our result out to the base color. All right, let's go back up to this. And so you see it's it's black, but it's got a little bit of that bluish mixed in it. I don't know that that's totally accurate, but that's it gets a little bit more interesting color than just black, right? Because we could just go... Grab this hex code here. Let's take a comparison. This may not it may not even be that noticeable, right? So that's just the black, and that's this mix, which has a little bit of a bluish tint to it, which I think more reflects it. It's it's like a very dark blue purplish tint, and we can we could tone that down more. Uh, we could even grab uh, another one. We could shift D to duplicate this. And we could just make this like absolute blackness. We can make this lighter. This will lighten it. We can make this darker to darken it. But we still maintain like a little bit of that tint. It's still a little bit more nuanced. Blue tone makes it a little more real object. Yeah, exactly. So this is the thing. Um, there, There's three things in my mind that make or break just the on the object itself, right? Because there's other things beyond the object, but just on the object itself, when you're modeling things, three, three things that kind of make or break 
whether or not the object looks like something from the real world, right? A number one is you can see right now, all of the edges soundless are super sharp. And how many things do you see in real life that have super perfect sharp edges like that? Perfect all the way through, right? Without any kind of nicks or deviation or anything. At the very least, you may see a little bit of like a bevel on the edge, a little roundness. And so just adding, just for the the show, just to show here, I'm going to add a bevel, put a couple more segments on it. And then I'm going to turn it, I'm going to turn it down real close to it. Let's put 0 0.001, right? That's just like a tiny, tiny amount of roundness on it. Okay. Just a tiny amount. You don't have to do this. I'm just saying most objects and the PS2 certainly is like this, especially at its age. At this point, there's a lot of edges on it that have been rounded down from people touching it and rubbing on things. There's a lot of little nicks and stuff. There's ways you could go through and model individually those things. There's other ways you could do uh, little nicks and scratches and things to add imperfections. But those imperfections and, and smoothness and stuff on the edge goes a long way towards that. You, you can bend things in a little bit. Like think about the shape. The less perfect, the better. Do you want it like close to perfect, but not totally perfect. But that may be a stylistic choice. The next thing is the the color itself a flat just one flat color can look fine but i think mixing some colors in gives a little bit more nuance um gets a little bit more right reflection the last part of it and this is just on the object itself um is uh noise you add a little bit of noise to it that gives you like a little bit of smudginess like some fingerprinting you know, a little bit of a real world scuff or dirt or just the natural kind of way the material reflects stuff. Because if you make this very reflective, it's going to be like uniformly reflective. It very uniformly reflects the light. All right. So I like the base color. I'm not going to do the bevel now. We'll do it. We'll do a bevel, but I'll do a bevel later in a different different terms. Um, and I know I said at the beginning about the destructive and non-destructive. You can go into these lines and bevel them with a control. And I do not recommend that unless you are very confident because then you're just kind of stuck with it. So I can hit control B and bevel this and I can scroll the wheel up to add more stuff. And that might look fine, except I can't change that now. I can't edit that. And it would be a huge pain in the butt to take that back to a square edge and something that I could edit and change. And once I do that, if I need to add more lines this way or cut in this way, it gets a lot more complicated. Um, always where, where you can do that with the bevel modifier. It's a little trickier to work with. Um, you may run into issues, but a lot of times those issues you'll run into, uh, where you try to make it like real big bevels and you see that bevel is not really getting any bigger. That's because it's clamping it. And you can override that and you can see these weird angles because the lines are starting to roll over each other and get messed up. So you might not get exactly what you want, but you can, when we do the bevel, I'll get more into it, but you have, you could have quite a bit of control over where this is beveled on the object, how much it's beveled individually, but this is non-destructive. And if I am working on this in an hour from now, I say this bevel doesn't look right. I can go back in here and I can change this and it hasn't changed anything permanently on the model. And if I don't like it all, I can just get rid of it. It's called not non-destructive, non-destructive model. You can look that stuff up. Highly recommended, highly recommended. Use modifiers, unapplied modifiers, wherever you can and keep them unapplied as long as you can. And if you have to apply them, Shift D, duplicate the object, throw it in a backup, hide it. It's there. You can always come back to it. I know I'm jumping all over the place. This is why I say I'm not a teacher, because I have no consistent setup for this stuff, or no consistent like notes for this. Um, I'm going to stick back to the texture here. I'm going to add in a bump map, just called bump. I'll put this on the normal. And the normals 
or what I was talking about earlier, that you mo more or less like at the basis, your normals on a, a something like this that is totally flat. The only normal that is going to apply to this is it, is it inside or is it outside? But as you make get the shape more complicated, cut more sides into it, that normal determines how the lighting reflects off of it, how it bounces off of it. It's part of the lighting simulation that it uses when it renders things to interact with the lighting. Lighting is another big one. Um, it's a little bit more advanced, but when you're rendering stuff like you're going to want to learn lighting and dig more into that. I can't tell you much about it. I don't do a lot with lighting myself because <laughs> most of my purpose is for one set scene that has a set lighting that I'm terrified to mess with because I don't have to redo everything. I'm going to do it eventually. My lighting is extremely basic, but lighting like makes or breaks that stuff too. If you have good lighting can make something that looks so, so look, look phenomenal and spectacular and very realistic. You can make without too much difficulty, very realistic things in blender just by doing some nice things with the texture, varying the lighting up there. Um, but what this bump map does is I can feed this a value and it will apply that to the normal map on this. And we're going to use that to make that kind of rough gritty texture that the plastic has. Now it's going to apply to everything for right now. And we'll go back later and we can assign different faces on this different values to vary which areas are flat and which areas had about for this, I'm just going to put it in all of them. So we're going to take the color out of this mix and we're going to feed this into the height. And you're not going to see much at first because we haven't done anything with the scale, but you can see already and you could, you could do this if you have something that doesn't really have that kind of texture, but you want to give it some variety. You can see, I don't know how well, because this is a very dark object, how well the YouTube, you know, compression is, is messing around with this. Um, you can see this kind of shadingness going on here. This is just random noise that it's mixing in and it just gives it a little bit of variety and you can go in on the settings on this noise and you can change the roughness distortion. What I want to look at is scale and we're going to take this up to about 500 and that seems like a lot, but look at that. We, we might even go, I think 500, I think if we go fast 500, we may not even see it if I go to a thousand. A thousand's pretty, that's pretty fine. That may, that may be where we want. But what this does is it doesn't just give it that look, like it's drawn in. It's actually calculating the light based on these crevices. Would it, would it, and they're, they're not in the model geography, they're the model topology. They're not actually modeled in there. If we look at this, it's still just a face. But as far as the light simulation goes, this may as well have all these tiny little bits in it. And that's just random noise. Super easy, right? Easy peasy, lazy even. But now we've got something that has a little bit of texture. And if we go in, I'm, I'm gonna save. I didn't say this before. Save a lot, because this program can crash, right? folder ps2 um it can crash you may ir irrevocably mess something up if you are very paranoid about it you can save different versions and iterations of it before you do things make sure you save should have said that earlier and i should have saved before i haven't done too much work because i'm jibbing jabbing on here let's render that light is in a really odd spot and there's not much in the way of background. Let's move that light. Let's just shift this around make an object mode. Hide our references. Where's our light at? Let's grab this light. Bring it over here. We can kind of preview how that looks in this way. Let me drag this light around. Let's move our light. Put that light right around in the middle there. What I what I did there is your options are for your viewpoint view viewport shading. This is your viewport, what you're looking at. Um, wireframe. 
uh, this is it's called solid. The solid object does not apply any of the materials and just uses this basic thing. Um, good to look at when you're working on stuff if you want to make sure that your normals didn't get screwed up and you won't get weird shading issues. Uh, then you've got a preview of your material, material preview. And then the final one is it's actually rendering it. Let's check my rendering. This may freak things out. Got EV. Set it to cycles and use the GPU. It's a little bit more power. Okay. Let me move and render the image. There we go. Now, this isn't a real high res uh, image. I haven't adjusted my samples up or denoising or anything. But you can see there's like a texture to it, right? It's more than just flat black. It's more than just a flat color. That looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty, pretty similar um, to what we've got. We may adjust the scale up or down on it. I think it looks pretty good. All right. So that's our shading, uh, one one for now. And we can duplicate this out and make adjustments to this. We can adjust the strength uh, up or down and that will result in a, a different appearance to it. Show you where strength of one, we can go down to it. It will make that more or less powerful. We can crank it, I think one is the most. We can crank the distance up and add more to it, make it look more correct. We can crank the distance down one is pretty good you might turn the strength down a little bit if you want it to have a more subtle effect oh just got this buffering i might switch this back over to ev which uses more cpu than gpu i'm getting a note on this uh sir if you see any kind of stuttering or anything it says i'm not receiving enough video could just be youtube can be this because OBS and Blender are going to be fighting over resources and stuff. And even though the system is fairly powerful, uh, either one of those tools will just use whatever it can. And if something else tried to see it with some games, sometimes stuff may freak out. It looks okay. It's okay. Yeah. You know, sometimes YouTube gives me that message and I ask and everybody tells me it looks fine. And then sometimes like, you know, I, usually I can see on OBS that if OBS is freaking out and it's got its bit rate listed and that will like drop out or it'll give me like drop frames due to network. And that's if that says if OBS says it's having problems, you're going to see problems. But sometimes I look up at YouTube and YouTube tells me it's not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. That's what it says. Um, the most I think that happens is I see this on other people's streams and that's why I think it's a YouTube thing and I don't fault them. It's free. It's not, I'm not paying anything for them for this. So they, they can do this. Um, I think you're getting like a little lower priority on that. And what happens is you, what you may be watching. If you look down at the video might not be live. I had this, I don't know if this is happening to you, but that, I, this happens to me on some streamers where like it's, I'm seeing a lot of buffering. I get a lot of the, the spinning wheel and, uh, I just like take it back a second so it's not live live it's just like two seconds off and like that's enough that's fine it's like a latency thing i i don't know um so we've we've got a baseline here that will make it easier when we're putting in uh some details we'll get something we can work off of i'm gonna turn it off right now because it does eat up some resources so let's see what we want to do next. Let's bring our reference images back. Go back to toggle see-through mode. So we've got lines cut for this. And this is like the, the next big thing to me. Oh, let's do this first. I just realized this. Cut this side in. I'm going to have to go further than that. Do, do, do. Side 
bottom. Yeah, I kind of over the place, but this is a pretty good, pretty big gap. I'm going to Alt E to extrude manifold. We're going to bring that in. And that should, in theory, have auto merged that stuff. Possibly see some. Oh, it's probably just those two lines being very close together. One thing you can do is if you are worried that you have duplicate vertices, you toggle um, X-ray one of the vertices and just right click near it. And if you keep right clicking and it's just one, you see that white dot it means it's selected. You're fine. Um, if there's more than one layered right on top of it, like if I, if I click on this vertices, I'm going to shift D duplicate this vertices and leave it in its place. This is how you know you have duplicate vertices. The right click, it's selected. I can tell by these lines, but I can't see what I've selected. If I click it again, I get a different vertices. That color changes. There's two vertices there. Now, in this instance, one of them's not connected. Um, in most cases, the way you're going to deal with that, depending on what is you find, it's probably a leftover from an extrusion or something that duplicated. You just select both of them, hit M, merge by distance. Now you've got one. Now you've got one vertices dealt with. That is a very common problem when you're doing stuff with this. If you're extruding a lot of shapes and moving things around, um, you may end up with those duplicate vertices, weird little phantom vertices like that. It is especially apparent if, uh, like they get moved and you end up with like an overlap. I see it happen with some modifiers, like a solidifier or something, and it will make two pieces. Think about your fingers interlocking. Your fingers are poking through, and that's supposed to be a solid corner, but you get bits poking through. It's usually because of you know, weird duplicate vertices, and then something else, like a bubble, gets applied, and it doesn't know what to do with it. That's a common thing. So that's why I'm always checking when I do these uh, extrusions to make sure I'm not getting oddball dupes. Okay. And then we'll Alt E, extrude manifold again. Oop, didn't select everything. Shift to select that. Alt E, extrude manifold. I want that right on the line. We'll go here and check. X ray. Nothing, nothing selected, just the one, just the one. Very good. Now let's check our line work here. We've got a break from here to here. So we're gonna K, bring up the knife tool to reconnect to that. Just so it doesn't break things. And other than that, I think we're okay on that, okay. So now we've brought that in. Let's go ahead and bring in these on the front and back. Now the side, this side, I don't think really cuts in. It might. No, no, it does a little bit. And that's just made up for by the feet. Because it's got little rubber feet on the bottom of it. You know, that's the only reason I thought it might not cut in. What is this rubber covers? That's not getting. No, it's just it's weird. Sorry, I just noticed something on the fan, but it's nothing. Um. So those are kind of angled in the, these areas. They're not straight up and down. Uh, left and right, the front, and the back. They're all slightly angled in, approximately the same angle. Sorry if I'm getting off the mic. I'm rolling my PlayStation 2 around in my hands. So we've got all four of these corners angled in. Ever so slightly. And they're it's all approximately the same. So what am I going to do? I'm going to try this first. I'm going to select all of these. If it was just one solid piece in the bottom, 
I would just select the four corners, you know, obviously the whole thing. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of those and just hit S to scale. And we're just going to scale it slightly in. And what that does is it shrinks that bottom, which will, which will force that obviously to become more curved. And that, look at that, that lines up pretty well, perfectly with that. I know it doesn't line up space wise. I still argue that's a perspective thing. Um, it's a little bit more pronounced on the front. Maybe a little bit too much on the front. We can scale just on that axis, which is the X axis and bring those back out. But on the side, which could just be a trick of a perspective that looks very, very much on point. So let's scale this back out just cause I'm getting picky now. Let's scale this X. Yeah. All right. So we've still got a slight angle on it. It's not as extreme, but it is there. Hide this. It is there. And that shouldn't have impacted the side at all. Nope, that's him. So we only scaled it along one axis instead of like all points to shrinking in towards the middle. It just shrinks side to side x axis. So that's pretty good. All right, so that's you know your good base base shape there. Um, next, we're going to I want to cut in these loops, and then from there. Um, I may be done with that end of it because we've got the back. I don't think I'm going to touch the back too much today. I will be totally honest with you. If you've noticed, or maybe not because you don't see them, the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, um, there is a, I have just had those with the PlayStation. Uh, I've got a 360 that I haven't shown yet. I've got a Sega Saturn I haven't shown yet. Uh, I never model the back. <laughs> I never model the back connections because you don't see them. Um, and I, and I just move on to the next one. I'm like, this is good. I move on. I could, um, it starts to get complicated and I start to second guess myself what I'm going to do. So this one, I'm, I want to start doing the back on these, even though nobody sees them. I ran in this with a 360, the Xbox 360 that I modeled and it's not perfect. There's some, some oddness to it that was based on a, a um, reference that I had that leaves it a little bit off in some parts that I want to, some of it I'm going to fix. Some of them I'm just going to leave. Um, but when I went to put it in my background and capture that bit for, you know, when you see the console, you know, if I go to my chatting screen, you see the PlayStation. Um, it was like, if I stand it up on its side, you can't see the hard drive. You know, it's an old Xbox 360 Elite, so it's got the hard drive sticking out of the side of it. You can't see that. And all the little holes that I punched in it, and I'm like, oh, man, I was really proud of that. It's like, okay, well, if I put it lay flat, and then you can kind of see it, but it runs off the side of the camera. I'm like, oh, man, this is, thing's too big. The camera angle, you can't see all the details. So we are going to cut in these lines and it's going to be real easy to make these nice and even what we've got is one, two, three, four, five, six, six areas. And if we count the lines, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We've already got two. So we're going to need 10 lines equally spaced in, in between the top and bottom. Easy peasy. Okay. Control R. Control R is going to give us an edge loop. Put it on this edge here. We're going to scroll up on the mouse wheel. And it's probably very small and difficult to see, but way down in the lower left corner, it'll show you the number of cuts. We're going to scroll up till we get to 10. And that's 10. 
That's 10 cuts. Now I can slide this up or down as needed. I don't, I like it where it's at. So I'm just gonna hit escape and that puts it in place. Now we've got 10 cuts. Now we don't need all of this, all of this on the back, all of this along the side. I'm not gonna worry about that right now, but there are ways that you can deal with this, where this suddenly becomes extra geometry that you don't need. And the way you deal with it is basically you would put like a loop here or somewhere around here and re-angle these so that it all just loop cuts back around on itself. It's kind of complicated. I'm not sure I know how to do it properly. So I'm not going to do that right now because I'm not terribly worried about the extra geometry over here simply because this is not going to be deformed. If this was something that needed to bend or be deformed, or I had a hard limit on the number of faces I could have, the number of polygons based on what I was modeling, I would be more concerned about this. But for our appearance's sake, I'm not. I'm not worried. But that's something that you can you should think about when you're building this stuff. Um, that's a little bit more advanced. Uh, it's how to close this stuff off so that you don't have to have all these lines. Because this line, it's just going to be flat over here. It basically serves no purpose to have it in my mind, you know? So now we have this, we can go through, I can hit alt along the edge here to select all of these Every one of these and it will, it's selecting the loop. And if I selected it on the upper edge, it would select this loop across, but we want these loops. I don't want that. So we select this side loop. It's kind of, it's kind of, I don't know if the explanation makes a lot of sense. It can be kind of tricky because sometimes like you're selecting in it and it kind of goes off in its own way. This is relatively simple, but we don't want these. So I'm going to hit control and box or control, not shift and box select that. And then I'll deselect those. We don't want any of these on the back. Uh, do we want these? I, don't, I think the back, the back is flat. The back is flat on this. So we don't want these control, not shift. So not these. So this, we've got these. I mean, that, it, even though I had to deselect that, it's easier than going through and click, 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 click all of these. Any, any little shortcut you can take. And then what we're going to do is we're going to alt E. Uh, I'm going to try to, uh, do manifold and scale these in on the X and Y axes. And it may, I may, may not like what I see. And I may end up going back and doing these individually because what I'm afraid of is that it will raise these up or down. And I just want it straight in or that this in the back here will not go in kind of evenly. Like this line will not evenly line up at the end. It will be in a little bit. So we're going to see we're gonna, we're gonna try this. Let's save <laughs> just in case I'm gonna all eat to extrude manifold. The difference between extrusion, extrusion and extruding manifold is that manifold will get rid of, um, sides. That it crosses over. I don't know if we really need. Maybe you just extrude. Extrusion may do it too. Because I don't really have sides to cut out. As much. Because these are selected. Well I don't know. Do I need to select these? Let's give it a try. I may not need to select these, these back faces. Because it's pulling it in from the side there. Let's just see. We'll try just an extrusion first. And then I'm going to. Um, going to scale this. See, it's going all higgledy piggledy. If I shift Z. All right. So that at least like is keeping it from scaling up and down, but it's getting all weird. Let's try alt S. That's a little bit more of what I want but it's folding in weirdly. You can see the, the corner here. See the corner folding in on itself. 
So let's back this up. Let's go back to box select. Let's do this. Let's get rid of these. Let's get rid of these. Let's get rid of this. I'm going to do these one at a time. I'm going to Alt E manifold. I'm going to take these back to that line. And it should be, I should have grabbed those so that that's one solid line. Okay. So that's done. And because I put that guide there, it just snapped right in. So now we're going to take these and we're going to snap these in. I think this will be the better way to do it. I, sometimes it works depending on how particular you are about how this stuff extrudes in where you just scale, you grab a bunch of sides like that and scale it in and you can get a nice effect. You can scale a bunch of, um, cuts in like that very nicely and very efficiently. But if it has to be a very particular way like this, I want it to be a very particular way. Um, I don't want to do it that way because it, it doesn't quite look right in my eyes. And I could go back and clean it up later, but it'd be a lot more cleanup work. Just zoomed in more on this. The reason I look in the undo history instead of just hitting undo is uh, sometimes I'm not sure if it got it correct. Just want to make sure that I am actually hitting this line here. Okay, looks good. Just checking for those duplicates. That's a real simple, easy, lazy way to do it. Let's grab and go up and in. It's a good way to do it too, because if it's floating right behind it, if there was an extra one floating behind it, it would kind of float in there. And we can go back later and just select all the vertices and tell them to merge by distance. And we can set the distance that the vertices will merge into each other based on that. If you set it all the way up, all your points on the model will merge into one. <laughs> like if I selected everything on this and said, you know, merge by distance and then, or set the distance real high, or if I hit merge at center, well, well now we have a single vert vertex and our model has caved in on itself entirely. We don't want that, <laughs> but it can be useful because if your vertices, if you have some duplicate vertices issues going on and they're right next to each other, you can just select everything and do that and just kind of tick it up and it will tell you down at the bottom like how many vertices it got rid of that way real handy yeah so this does cut in on the back here it just doesn't cut in this way hit that decimal point the decimal point on the number pad is useful because it kind of resets the camera because sometimes you might be trying to zoom in like I'm trying to do, get real close to it because you got old flimsy eyes that, you know, they pull out of a trash can like I do. And you have trouble seeing stuff and sometimes you'll go to zoom in and it will just like, it'll go from here straight to here. And you're having issues with it, just recenter the, the camera at the current angle or based on what you're looking at with the decimal point on the number pad. If you have like a 10 keyless and you don't have a number pad and you want to do this, my only advice is to go out and get a, get a friggin' number pad. <laughs> you can re you can redo those, uh, the key mapping, you can change the key mapping, but like every tutorial that you watch, everything you look at is going to make the assumption that you have mostly the default key mapping and you'll be thrown way off. It makes it a lot easier. Trust me on that. I, I keep saying this. Is anybody, I know Jeremy, you mentioned an interest in Blender. I don't know if you've messed with it at all. I don't know if any, any of you guys have messed with Blender or have an interest in messing with it. I'm like on the fence, like on the one hand, I hope somebody does so that all of my jabbering on here that like, here's some things you might want to avoid, like can actually be helpful for people or interesting at least. But if I'm just going on and on and like, no, I'm good. 
<laughs> I don't need to mess with that. Like, oh, okay. Never heard of this program? Oh, Blender's fantastic. It's, uh, you know, it's a free tool that is used uh, in big Hollywood productions. Um, you can you can animate with it. Uh, that's you know the 3D modeling. You can do you know compositing with the 3D on it. Um, it is a very nice tool. Uh, I like it a lot, but of course I do because I use it. <laughs> I use it a lot. Um, I I find it's very fun. It's I find it very relaxing and rewarding to go through and and put this stuff together. Granted, I'm just like rendering old ass consoles on here. But uh, I like it. But that's this is the tool that I've used to make. You know, when I bring out the the NES and I load a cartridge in it, that was all done in Blender. Um, I mean, I did some textures in, in Krita, uh, but I did all the animation in Blender, animated all of it. It just exports a bunch of images, which I compiled and exported from DaVinci Resolve, and then I bring it into OBS and play the video and I have a button I hit when I load the cartridge it plays a little video um, I did all that in in blender um, and I'm like super basic entry level stuff you can get a lot more advanced um, I'm gonna grab these lines and pull them out because like I was saying you might not really see it on the reference image let's go to our let's back out of it edit mode go to object mode uh you wouldn't see it in the front side top uh side bottom side bottom rep is what i want here we go so it may not be really apparent from this image and i'm rotating it as though it's 3d you can see it but right here at the end, it's not straight back. It's not the same depth the whole way through. It's kind of raised up a little bit as it reaches the end. So I don't want to leave that perfectly straight in there. But it is still indented. It's very, it's very slight. It's very slight. But it is at an angle. And I'll know. <laughs> Even if nobody else can see, even if I look at it and I couldn't tell you the difference, I'll I'll think about it at night. Go, oh, I almost had it. So let's see. So normally you drag, you would grab these. You just hit G. You can grab them. You can move them on an axis. So if I just move these on the X axis, you can see it's bringing this up. And I think that will do it because it looks like it's not bringing it back. Let's just do this. We'll bring them up to about here that may not be that may be too much I'll take a quick look at my ps2 here don't mind don't mind my face getting all wild probably a little bit further back than that Farewell, PS2. I barely knew you. <laughs> Put it down on the wrong side. It's fine. It's been through worse. Uh, here's here's a, a tip that probably nobody asked for. Let's say I move this back, and then I came back a while later. And I'm like, oh, I really don't like this. I really don't like where that's at. You can slide all of these back to where this is by selecting all of those edges, and then using Shift to right click and select one that is back where it's at change this transform pivot point which determines when you grab things or scale things what's the center what is it moving it towards i don't know how to explain it very well set it to active element because then all of your transforms will be rel relevant or relative to the last selected element which is your active element which is this so now if i were to scale i think scale scale x and zero, it will line them up perfectly with this. So now they're back to where they were. They're perfectly square. 
to where they were before. And same for this. If I had moved these out, and instead of moving them straight out, it had kind of moved them in an angle, and I needed to move them back, I could just select this and suck them back there. That is something that I struggled with a lot uh, when I was initially working on stuff, is I'd get things out of line, and I couldn't figure out how to line things back up nicely. But the nice thing with this is because I, I need this to be angled, that's all I got to do is move these lines back and forth. Make it a little bit slider. Doesn't have to be real extreme. That's good. It's there. And if we needed to move it later, we could quite, quite easily from this. Just choop, 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 move that stuff back out. Okay. So we'll take a look. It's coming together. It's coming together. So again, this is pretty good. You could slap this in something as is and just say, we're done. <laughs> I wouldn't, but you could. You could do that. So let's see what we want to do next. So we've got that base shape chopped in. And the details that we, I wouldn't just do with the texture in this case are the go up to this right, this for a sec memory card doors the controller ports even if we don't model them because this can get pretty elaborate depending on how much of this detail you want you've got like this metal clip here that kind of holds them in these things these things aren't super difficult to model honestly this is only three of them and each one of them has three holes and i'll show you where you can put that stuff together without too much difficulty the metal clips might be a little bit touchier and that's something that for for me for my purposes of just putting it in there i probably wouldn't go to the extreme of modeling these if i wanted to show them i would just take this image and apply it as a texture onto the back. I might not do these. I have done that before for, for other consoles. I've taken an image and just set it on a face and said, that's it because it's complicated and I didn't want to get crazy with it, but this isn't super, super hard to make these. Um, but I probably wouldn't go to the length of that. And same for this. If you look inside here, you can see there's the SSD. There's a little blue tray it sits in. You can see right into the hard drive bay. You can see our main board. You can see our power supply here. I think that's the, yeah, mostly the power supply, heat sink fan. You can see part of the main board here. You're not going to see that. You're not going to see that. Um, I have seen people who model these things and model it so that you can open up like the casing opens up and it's got the circuit board and everything inside of it. And that's wild. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> It, it would be a very fun project. I'm not saying don't do that. I'm not saying that's excessive. That would be a very fun and interesting project. That is a lot. And I'm never going to show that, I don't think, on for the stuff that I use it for. I would never, I would not show that. So I don't have to go that far. But you certainly can. You certainly can. Um, so let's grab some of this outside stuff. We can do that. Uh, we get the Sony logo here. Probably there'll be a divergent point for me, so I'll wait to do that. We got two buttons, and those get things that light up. It's kind of fun to do those. The disk drive tray with this little symbol on it, and the memory card doors and these, these vents, and then all of these. And I can do the back later. Why am I turning it around as though the back is there? Um, Let's do the vents. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some booleans. I'm going to do some booleans. And I'm going to assume these are pretty much in the right spot. And what is a boolean, you ask? We're going to find out. So we're going to make an object. And we're going to apply a modifier called a boolean. And what the boolean, boolean does 
is we'll apply the modifier to the base PS2. Here. And that Boolean takes a reference object and uses that reference object to cut into this model based on where you put it. So we're just, we're going to make a template for those vents that will cut through this. Um, an alternative that you could do is that you could take this face. Let's get face select. Select to make sure I'm selecting the right face. When you have it on x-ray, it can be real easy to select the back face. And when you're looking at it from the front, who knows which face is selected? Was it the front? Was it the back? Who knows? I never noticed how weird a aesthetic choice was. A big blue square around the front USB ports. Yeah, it is. It is odd, is it not? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna add while I'm thinking of this because I keep rotating back around there. I'm going to add another reference image that is just the PlayStation, so I can uh, do this. That was that was not that uncommon at the time for a lot of things to have ports like that. Um, it was oftentimes for labeling purposes. If you think of the back of a computer, and I don't, I don't see this much anymore. Um, but that's because the computers I see anymore are like custom builds or, or otherwise, but it, it's that same style that the backs of the computer would have like a sticker fit over the IO panel. And that would have like colors and labels on it. Now this one doesn't, it has some labeling on it, USB. It represents the strange IEEE uh, 13, is it the 1334? Um, the Firewire port, which is weird that it had that, right? To me, it's really weird that it had that. And I don't know what you could, I think you could hook a hard drive up to it and you could transfer pictures off of it because the PS2 was like more than a game console. It's an entertainment device. When it came out, much like the PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 before, PlayStation 4 did Blu-rays, didn't it? I don't remember. The PlayStation 5 does. PlayStation 3. No, PlayStation 3 did blue. Of course, PlayStation 4 did. 3 is what started. When 3 came out, it was like an excellent price for a, a Blu-ray player. Well, the PlayStation 2 was a DVD player when DVD players were very new. And it was like, hey, this works great. You can get a remote control for it. Sure, cool. Um, you could also load videos and photographs on it. And there, in, with certain development kits and setups, like you could put Linux on it. You could run Linux off a hard drive on it. You could um, use it sort of like a computer. It was very, it was really odd. The PlayStation 3 went further with that. And then they took it away later, which got them sued. Um, I may be wrong. Maybe I'm confusing. I'm pretty sure you could run uh, kind of Linux on the PS2. Um, but, you know, on the hard drive model, the, the slim model doesn't have a hard drive. It cuts all that out. By that point, anything that used it officially was dead. Firewire was very useful for a lot of stuff. Firewire is useful for cameras. Uh, I used to work with uh, mini DV cameras, and we would transfer um, footage from the mini DV camera to the PC with... Uh... Oh, no, wait. What? No, we would just feed that out. We, we did use Firewire on them to an external recorder. And then that came into the, um, yeah, they recorded video to an external recorder via Firewire, and then that's how we transferred it. it. Had its uses. It was faster than the original USB. I think it was faster than USB 2.0. Uh, and then it just kind of got abandoned more or less or rolled into um, a Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt kind of took its place. And now that's just like a, that's a huge damn mess, right? Thunderbolt and USB-C, all of that, USB 3.0. Oh, my God. I hate that stuff so much. You remember those cameras? Yeah, you worked with those cameras. Those are those are decent cameras. <laughs> these, these cameras that uh, we're referencing were purchased by the person who ran the department at the time that I worked there. Um, ostensibly to film things around the organization, but he never wanted to use them within the organization. Uh, he specifically got these cameras paid for by the organization so that he could film his Indiana Jones fan movie over the summer. He wasn't, I mean, he was, this is the same guy that got, got booted out for, uh, punching somebody and throwing a monitor, a CRT monitor during the day. So that was, 
It's good times. It's an interesting person. Interesting person. Maybe didn't make the best choices, but we used those cameras for a long time. Uh, prior to like being able to record straight to a, a hard drive or internal storage on cameras, um, a mini D DV tape was a, a hot thing. Yeah, the the standards now, interconnectivity standards are like a mess. I the USB is particularly galling to me, right? And I even like the Thunderbolt aggravates me because it uses that same USB C connector. And when you're looking at stuff, it's like, does this have Thunderbolt? Which Thunderbolt? How good of a Thunderbolt? Like it's not super descriptive. The USB C is like, hey, you got USB C ports, like okay, but what what is actually on it? What is it actually carrying? Well, it's USB 3. Which USB 3? Which version of it? Because they keep changing the name to mean different things. I can't keep track of what's what on that. It's a huge headache. I was looking at capture cards. Like, you got to make sure you have this certain USB-C port. Like, I don't even know. I got to go dig out my motherboard manual to find out if I have one port that uses that. And it turns out I have one port that gives that, that speed. Um... They took something that was meant to be simple and universal and turned it to an absolute mess with the 3.0 stuff. And I don't understand why. I, I really don't know what they're thinking. They don't, they don't lost their minds. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, I think I can get rid of that. I think we're good. All right. Where are we at? 2.0, 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, 2, 3.2, Gen 2. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nightmare. None of it means anything. None of it means anything. Past 2.0. None of it means anything. Because <laughs> they keep they keep moving the goalposts or changing it. But you know what? And when it sucks, like... What sucks the most about it to me for, with the USB standards is that um, aside from like devices and trying to keep track of like what your device actually does, what its actual capabilities are, is when you get to cables and when cables start reaching that, HDMI is sort of like this where it's like you need an HD, HDMI 2.1 or 2.2, it's 2.1, maybe 2.2, capable cable. It's like, I got this cable. It's not labeled. I don't know. How do I test that? When well, you're going to need this $7,000, $10,000, $20,000 device. No, thank you. you. You can get a simple tester that's like point A to point B. Like, hey, this cable, A connects to A, B connects to B. We're all good. Doesn't tell you much else. It's like, what speed is this capable of? I don't know. Well, how much power can this handle? I don't know. Well, what's the label on the cable say? USB certified. USB certified for what? I don't know. You end up with a box of USB cables, right? In the old days, the problem was you'd end up with a box of USB cables. And on one end, you had uh, USB A, right? Which uh, plugged in your computer. And then you had USB B. But which USB B? Is it full size B? That for, for a long time only ended up being used for like printers and scanners and things like that. Because every other device had moved on to micro USB or mini USB. Which which are those two? So you end up with a bunch of these cables. And it's like, is it a micro? Is it a mini? Which one is it? You get the, the mini USB 3 that had like multiple, like a flat connector on it. Which is the one that says Diamond Ultra 8K. Oh, Jesus. You know what? Someone... Let me look this up. I was watching something the other day and somebody was talking about how the, the PS5 um, box says it, it does 8K. And they're pointing out how like new PS5 is compatible with 8K displays, but it cannot output 8K content as of yet. As though a software update, I don't, there's a lot you can do with that. I don't know if a software update is going to cut that. Um, but it's on the box. Yeah, it is. The The box says the PS5 can output 8K. There's only like one or two games that are capable of doing 8K, but they can't output 8K on it. And I've heard people say, well, it's for video, not for games. Like, great. What video is doing it? I know there's 4K Blu-rays out there. I, I don't know. I don't pay a lot of attention to this. Are there 8K 
Blu-rays out? Like, I don't I don't think so. A lot of people they that I was watching something the other day that they're or listening to something the other day where they're talking about uh marketing terms, and it was in relation to the oncoming death of physical media. And they said according to these numbers, like Blu-ray has yet to outsell DVD. DVD consistently outsells Blu-ray year after year that people don't care enough to upgrade to Blu-ray. Personally, I like Blu-ray. I like Blu-ray a lot. The only thing I wish Blu-ray would have done would, would have been to actually fix the um, subtitle system because that's all kind of a mess. But the subtitles do look a lot better on, on Blu-rays. I don't know if I've ranted about subtitles. How much you know about subtitles, but they're kind of crazy and janky but it can lead to some very interesting things but it can be a mess um i i spent a lot of time last year year before last transferring uh a lot of my media onto a plex server and a lot of the stuff that i have is subtitles either foreign movies or anime i'm, I'm a you know i'm a stupid weeb nerd I can go just point and laugh and I like to watch it subtitled because I'm a stupid weeb nerd. And uh, man, I had a hell of a time getting that going because they're because people are like, no, no, what you got to do is you got to export those subtitles and convert that into a text file using OCR optical character recognition. I think that's what this stands for. Pretty sure um, to to convert what the subtitles are, which are images. Subtitles are not text; they're images. And you have to use the same kind of software you would use to convert a scanned document into searchable text, OCR, to convert that into a text-based subtitle or subtitle file to go with their video file so that most media playback devices will play that because a lot of media playback devices when fed video from Plex will have trouble trying to render the video with that. And a lot of times it won't directly play the video, which is your best quality, because it can't handle those subtitles. So what it will have to do is it will have to um, pre-render, I don't know if that's the right term, pre-render the video. Basically, it will have to take the video and the subtitle and render it out as a video with the subtitle just embedded in it, no longer a separate option, and then send that out, which messes with your playback. If you try and fast forward rewind, it has trouble. It can struggle sometimes depending on the, the quality of your playback. But if it their text, it can just send the text out and it's fine. 4K video, Willy Wonk in the Chocolate Factory. The Gene Wilder version. Ooh. It's a new 4K scan. I'll have to check that out. I bet that looks I bet that looks nice. I I get a lot of older movies. That's my thing. A lot of older stuff. And when they do like a new 4K, even even like a 2K, they do a new transfer off of that. Oh man. Like, I thought, you know, DVDs looked nice. And I wasn't one of those people like, do I really need Blu-ray? And then I got a Blu-ray that had a new transfer. It wasn't just like the, the 1080p DVD video thrown to a Blu-ray. It was like a new scan of the film. Because film is like, comparatively, they could grab 8K off of something that's 40 years old because like film is always going to be a higher resolution than, than digital. Well, I shouldn't say always, but... You know, I forget the numbers that they attribute on it, but like you can go higher. So like, yeah, you can take it. You could take Lawrence of Arabia and rescan that film in 4K. Watching heat in 4K was pretty great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Plus the, the surround. See, that, that's you don't always get that in the sound because they have to remaster all of that stuff. Um, but when they do, oh boy, like it's real nice. Uh, I, I think there's a point where the stuff kind of stacks up faster than like media really keeps track of it. Like, I, I think that 4k is really cool, but there's not as much 4k out there. I hate streaming services that offer like 4k HDR because it's not actually a lot of times it's faked HDR because the, the bandwidth required to actually send that out is, is not quite there. They have to employ certain compressions and things and it kind of breaks that so it's more or less faked hdr hey if it looks great to you that's fine but you know i i think that's another area where even just getting a tv it's like 
I think it's leveled off a little bit now, but like you'll see TV that has 4K on it, but it's like resolution, sure. But like not in terms of refresh rate, not in terms of color depth. You know, there's a lot more factors there. It's kind of aggravating. But yeah, 4K, 4K is great. And the, the uptake on that is great. The 4K subtitles, because it's a higher resolution, look a lot, a lot nicer than DVD subtitles. And I absolutely refuse. I refuse to take those subtitles and run them through an OCR and convert them into text. Number one, because it's a lot of work. And I, I've spent enough time getting that stuff to just play back right and rip that stuff. And I had, I've had to do some weird things to fix problems. Um, so that things would actually play back properly. But, uh, the other thing is when you're dealing with image based subtitles, like you can position them in different places on the screen so that if you've ever watched a movie that has like a sign in a foreign language and it has a subtitle right below the screen, right below the sign, even if it's like in the middle of the screen, you're not constrained to the bottom. Uh, of it you can put it anywhere when you convert it to text it all just goes in the one place you also can't really have different colors if two people are talking there's a lot more involved there is a different type of text format that allows you to do that formatting but most things don't use that i saw the most interesting use for a subtitle i ever saw was in ghost in the shell standalone complex um solid state society uh Movie? What kind of movie? It's not really an OVA. I don't think. Whatever. The Solid State Society Blu-ray. One of the subtitle tracks was storyboards because subtitles are images. All right. It's not text. It's a series of images. And so they, one of the special features was to watch uh, an overlay of storyboards over the scenes. And it was using a subtitle track. And so you'd flip over the subtitle track and it's just a bunch of like, black and white storyboards because it you know it's got enough resolution to support that's the only time i've seen something like that you remember like dvds when they first came out it was i'm sorry i, I haven't touched this model in a little bit i'll i'll get back get back to this um i'm gonna add a add a cube it's like day uh oh. shift day mesh cube and this cube and i'll come back to this i want to finish what i'm saying about dvds when dvds first came out right it was a it was a huge deal um that they they had all these things they talked about the dvds supporting right dvds are going to support uh different camera angles right and all the things you could do with special features right that was such a hot thing that they uh they talked up on it what am I selecting? Vertices. And almost nothing used that. I don't think I ever saw anything that, that alternate angle, which the, the angle button on remotes, which is now surely not on anything. I don't think I ever saw anything that used that. The most complicated special features I ever saw was on a Scott Pilgrim. They had all kinds of overlays and stuff. It was very elaborate. Um, it was a, the Scott Pilgrim versus the world um, movie. Which I really enjoyed and was surprised to learn was kind of a failure and, and became what they call a cult, you know, the so-called cult classic. Like, no, man, Scott Pilgrim was pretty popular, wasn't it? Had a great game. Had a great game. Still on my 360. And I dug that thing out of its, uh, you know, dust-coated uh, hole in the ground. It was still there. Yeah, they never use any of that stuff. I never see anything really advanced. Um, I, uh, on the Final Fantasy seven advent children blu-ray you can select some different font sizes and different colors there's like i think five different colors you can select i may be off on them there's multiple colors you can select but remember the subtitles are just images and so each one of the different sizes and different colors of subtitle that you're selecting is actually an entire separate subtitle track that it's selecting because it can't actively go in and scale the text. So that's the one downside, the major downside to subtitles, the image-based subtitles is that you cannot dynamic, dynamically scale them. That's the, the only thing that the text-based has that if the subtitles are too small, you can make them bigger. Now, streaming services, 
Uh, a lot of them offer that option because that's what they're doing. That that subtitle is is just text based because if it was the image based subtitles, it probably wouldn't come through. The only way you would get that image based subtitle on something you're streaming is if they pre um, pre inserted it. There's a term for it that I'm that I'm muxed pre muxed uh, transcoded transcoded. They'd have to pre transcode the video to have the subtitles baked into it in order to provide that sort of thing. That's I'm very interested in it. And I talk to people with it when about Blu-rays, people who worked with distribution on that, um, like what specifically changed when Blu-rays came out and what their preference was. And they pretty much universally said like Blu-ray was supposed to fix all of these subtitle issues and they really didn't. They're <laughs> still a huge mess. And that was, everyone was hoping for that. That's people that work in like, uh, authoring DVD and Blu-ray authoring. All right. We're going to do this. I'm looking at this shape. Now I'm back to the model after my 20 minute rant on something. You know, initially I was going to, we may do this in two waves more. Yeah, I'll do this in two. Because what I'm looking at here, if uh, I can conceal this for a second. Oh, let me conceal my cube. Where's my cube? Make a new collection here. We'll call this collection PS2 Bulls. We'll put all of these shapes and I'll put vent one here. Great. So what I'm looking at here is I'm going to make something to punch a hole through this. But when we look at this, it's not just these holes of this vent. Now you can ignore the kind of mesh behind it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tackle that because you're not going to see it really at the resolution I'm using it. Could, I could, if I were to do that, I don't think I would model that. I think that would entirely be a texture. It would just be a plane with a patterned texture, a repeated texture on it of this hex, hexagonal grid. And then all of the inside would be transparent. And that that's it. It would just be alpha transparency because I don't see a point in modeling that individually. That's a lot of polygons, but I'm not going to show that anyway. Because of the angle you're going to see it, it's just going to be darkness. Except for these. And that's interesting. There's these two right here that are not vents. There must be a screw hole or some kind of connector. Something there. But those aren't vents. Because all the rest of these are vents. They go straight through and there's a mesh right behind it. But it's not just a hole straight through. There's these the lines that separate them. All right. And then on top of that, there's these lines that go straight across. Let's take a look at this. Hopefully I don't drop it again. And those are kind of rounded. Not really set in. They're slightly set in. These lines that go straight side to side are slightly set in, but it's mostly that they're rounded a little bit. So... Probably the first thing that I want to do is get this shape down that has these grooves, or at least the lines for these grooves, which will also separate out these. All right. And then I will separate this out. So we need to put some lines on this vent cube so we've shaped it up that way let's see where it looks here great let's grab all of it let's grab that back why this way probably fine all right All right, so I can do, let's zoom way in here.
I'm going to try this. I don't know how well this is going to work. One, two, three, four. Do it. That lines up pretty well. That lines up pretty well on the tops of these. None of these lines separated. Look at the lines. I don't know if this will work. I've never done this before. If I duplicate, no, that just kind of floats it out into space. Let's not do that then. Extrude. I'll just kind of go wherever. I want to duplicate. What I want to do is duplicate these lines. I can just do this manually, I guess. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, and I can't recall a way to do it, but I want it to basically just duplicate each of these lines so that they're all perfectly set up here. They're all perfectly lined up. Let's backpedal this. Yeah. Envision of separation. Do I don't have the vocabulary. Yeah, I I feel like I know I've I've used a method like that before. That's putting them the same distance from each other, roughly. That's kind of what I want. I can kind of make that work. If I shift R and repeat, it will put one the same distance from this to this below it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nope. Edit. Redo. All right. Oh, I lost it. Oh. Okay, I'm go back. Go back. Where is my undo history? Okay. Let's try this again. Control R. Put that up there. I'll shift R. One, two, three, four, five, six. We will grab these loops. Alt. Shift Alt to collect all of these. Grab on Z. And we'll slide them down. If I, oh, that just slides it down the same distance. And then I'm going to Alt, oop, Control Alt Z. Nope. Shift Alt Z. There we go. It gets a little wonky when you're combining a bunch of different things. I don't know how I feel about this. We'll, we'll see. I'm just, I'm thinking of another way to do this. Cause they're lined up, but from my perspective, they look like they're subtly getting closer together as it goes down. So let's get rid of all of those. Let's add one, two, three, four. Let's add four. And I like how those are spaced. It's nice and evenly spaced. And let's do, what was it? Shift control R. 
No, let's see, that just does. Because I want this to be each of those split out. So that's not. There's going to be a way. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to line them up manually. Four at a time. I know there has to be a way to split that more or to automate that more, but just have to live with that. I guess I should I should rephrase. It's less about like manual versus automatic and more about like lining things up. Perfectly. You know what? I just thought of something. This is going to be sheer madness. All right. So now we're we are back to The base here. We got no loop cuts. I'm going to go to object mode. We got vent one selected, right? I'm gonna shift D. I'm gonna duplicate that bad boy. Alright? I'm gonna hide that. I'm gonna go into edit mode. This is this is probably like way excessive. Okay, I'm gonna control R. We're going to put our four loop cuts in. We're going to put them at the top, right? And then I'm going to put I don't know if this will really I don't know if it really, I'm thinking about merging these together, but I don't know if it will really do the trick. It might. All right. So then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen on these. Thirteen. We're going to going off of those middle ones put those on the right side okay so we've got top and right side now we hide that we're gonna go to this vent four let's get closer four on the bottom And 13 on the left. 13, there we go. Those will be on the left side. All right. Now this may or may not, may or may not work out. If 
I take these two and select them, and I control J, now they're joined into one. And I'm going to select all. So now, from the appearance, right, anyway, we've got our line work. It's all evenly spaced the way we want it to be. So everything is equal. However, I don't think this is exactly going to give me what I want it to. And we can test this by grabbing a face. And you can already see this face is like doubled up. All right. So let's select all. Let's merge by distance. Removed eight vertices. But that doesn't do anything for the faces. Yeah. The nice idea. Yeah, because that's not. These points are not connected. All right. I don't know. There's, I know, I'm struggling to remember. There's some way to do that, but. All right. Let's do separate things. do it now i'm like just obsessing over the silliest thing here but that's that's how i do it i can move on to uh i'm gonna look at look this up real quick but i'm gonna move on after this to uh the the rest of the front port stuff because it's will be easier to get something that looks more uh presentable <laughs> just by chopping holes in it and you can at least like round things out with like hey it looks halfway there Jobs of blunder depending on what outcome you know, I'm blowing operations out of here. I'm showing you how to see techniques. No, no parenting joining. Mm, kind of like scenery. Boolean. Shapes. Let's... Hmm. We try a boolean. Boolean. Oop, it's the wrong place for to put a tab. All right. So we got two objects here. So we're going to do a modifier. Boolean. And I want it to be combines mesh and antiway. So let's make it a union. And we'll use vent one. And I'll go with exact. You can do fast too. All right. So vent one zero zero one is what we are acting on. Let's hide that one. And we can take a look at this. Enter 
intersect. The difference is like they're they're the same thing, but however, I don't think it will show me the vertices. Um, let's just well, apply this and see. And that looks like it did it. That looks like it did it. Oh, <laughs> except for some random crap off the back here. The hell is this? Where where are these things going? Look at this junk. Look at this junk. Yeah, this junk hanging off here. That's what happens, man. It's fast. Seems totally wrong. Solve our options. Allow self interaction. Material, maybe material. I'm just interested in this not having these weird. I guess if I need to clean up this weird jank here, it's better than nothing. In my obsession to have like the equal pieces there. You know what? When I when I was originally thinking this through in my head, I was like, I could do something like this, right? Let's leave that unapplied for right now. I was thinking something like this. Let's let's just toss in a quick cube. All right. Let's edit this. Let's scale this bad mamma jamma down. All right. And what I can do with this cube. Exactly what I did with, with that other cuts. I'll put these cuts in here. I remember how many holes there were. I'm going to put these cuts in here. And all I'm interested in doing is making a form to cut that this is off but whatever this will this just shows my point so then all e extrude manifold we screwed that extrude that in there right all right so now we have this all selected and in edit mode we shift d to duplicate we hit x because it selects moving it over x and we move it over that far right now i'll hit shift r and it will repeat that and you can see it creates another one that same distance over Right, and now I've got this one object that I just slap in there. But bam The problem, and the reason I didn't do that, and probably still could have, is that, nope. There's this section in between And come back to that. I'll come back to that because I got a shape with a bunch of messy holes in it and I got to fix. I don't want to fix that and be overthinking this. Because if I do one that is um, just the panels. and then do a separate group that is just these. I think that would work better. So let's get our vent. This one. Shift D, duplicate that. Hide both of those. That was kind of a failed experiment. All right. Let's get rid of all of these. X. Get rid of the edge loops. Just because the shape is like the right shape that I want. All right. I still kind of have somewhat of the same issue. So let's just put one right in the middle. 
and then we will with that selected uh, control shift and R which lets us move out from that I can't do more than one can I I think I can but I can put them all equal from top to bottom. So they're at least uniform in that way. And that won't be happy with. In theory. No, oh, no, not that. Not that. going to go off of what's on the top this is why I said like I'm not the one to teach you because my methods are probably crazy okay so now I've got this shape and we want to take these make sure we're not selecting the back faces This one, this one, this one, this one, because that's just the middle. Alt E, extrude. Just going to go a little bit. They're about square. All right. That's about square ish. Where is, is that hidden right now? We're going to also uh, take this and try to line up the angle on this. We're going to try and match this angle. In fact, one way I could do this before putting those faces in, in theory, is that I can actually take this whole shape, if I want to line this up, because I'm, I'm being crazy now. I'm going to put this right, right there. Just, just touch that. We're going to make a Boolean on this bad boy. And then we're going to cut this. So now if we hide the PS2, You can see what we've cut into the shape. All right. And by doing that, we've, we're matching the contour of the front of that. And the reason I want to do that is so that the depth on these remains pretty much consistent through it. It might be better to put it in an angle, though. It's not that complex of a shape. It might be better just to rotate it. That's one way you could do this. But then all of your stuff is still straight out, so it's like cut straight into it. So let's, instead of doing that, we will just eyeball this. Now rotate this. And I think that's pretty close. Close enough for my liking. Okay. So now when we when we use this to cut in, um it will be at an angle that matches that, so it won't look odd, at least in my eyes. Again, might not even notice it. This is why this stuff takes me forever when I'm up till like three in the morning working on this stuff, because I'll, I'll come across something. Oh, that's getting all, all kinds of funky in there. Why are you getting funky in there? Probably just 
can't figure out how to... There we go. It looks worse than it was. Further than I wanted it to. That's probably good. It's a very subtle indent. Okay. So now we will go back to the PS2. We'll view that. And we'll use the Boolean on this. Boolean! And we'll do this. You can use faster and exact. exact. Fast usually does pretty good. Exact can be a little bit if you're um, a little more intensive. Let's go with exact. I always see a lot of things that recommend fast and then I end up like seeing issues with it. All right. So let's get this. Let's get real close to this. We only really want to push this in just a little bit. Okay. So that way, like, there's ever so slightly an indent on the these sections, and there's a deeper indent around that, and maybe too deep, right? So if we hide this now, we should see this pushed into it. And it's not pushed all the way through, which is nice. That's that we don't want it to make a hole yet. We'll make a hole with the next grouping, all right? But this is just uh, set in, All right? So we have these four cross areas. This is pushed in, and then we can come back with another set of another boolean and cut like the actual holes in it. We can cut the uh, actual like pegs through it. We see here the actual vent holes. So we've got half of that there. Oh, that's what I'm looking at. Like, what am I looking at here? Ah! Okay. All right, let's put this on. Oh boy. You can see those normals are all over the place. That's probably because for whatever reason, it's still trying to use the other material. <laughs> it at least gives us something to look at on here. So I'm going to now duplicate this. I'm just gonna call this pre-apply one. Because I don't I want to put this in the backup. And I'm going to apply this. And we're gonna go into edit mode on this. And let's uncheck those. And the nice thing when it does this boolean, and you come back in, it will um, grab a bunch of these sides. Let's grab the rest of these. I'm going to make a vertex group, which will make it easier to select these and only these in the future. All right. Uh, I'm going to add in these as well. And the reason I'm doing this is that the inside of this, let's grab the this lip here too. It's gonna look different. It's not gonna have that same kind of texture 
that the rest of it did. So I want to grab this now before it gets even more complex in theory. And we can assign it to a vertex group, which we can come back later and select them all to assign to a different um, a different material. So we'll get all that connected because this plastic might look a little bit different. It'll save us trouble from, from doing that. Not totally necessary. We're just going to name this outer vent. Two T's in the outer. I don't know. And sign. So we can come back and select only, excuse me, only that one when we need it. Okay. Now the rest of them. Now what I will do is I'm going to, I want to come back in edit mode. Grab this. We're going to uh, shift D to duplicate that. Hit this one. And then this one, we're going to get crazy with it. <clears throat> and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this down to the size of just one of these sets of holes. And I'm going to do exactly what I've shown before. Uh, we're going to cut this down to just be the size of it. And the reason I duplicated that cube because it was just a lazy way to line it up uh, to one side. And I'll work on that again later. We'll line it all up again. So I need to... I do still want those bits cut through it. Essentially just trim it down the side and then take the big sections. Yeah. Yeah, once we've trimmed out, trim this to line up with the bar there. I'm grab this X a little bit more, line up with the edge there. And then what we do is grab these faces. And we extrude them forward. And that's pretty much it. We can just extrude these forward long enough that we're pretty sure it'll create a hole. Except for one of them. And we can always scale that one back. Okay. And then in edit mode, shift D and X to move it over and just line it up roughly with those. And we can always come back and move these later. And then I will shift R to repeat it until we reached the end. And that should cover all of them. However, it may be that the cube that we have, um, does not quite line up. So let's get this. Let's unmask that. Unhide that. And you can see sort of here that this is off subtly from that. And that's because I made this the base one from a failed setup. So what we can do We can get we can get real complicated with this. I'm, I'm gonna get complicated. I want this to be like lined up. Nobody will care. Nobody will care. I care. I'm gonna select this one vertex here, and this is the edge. Hit Shift S. I'm gonna put the cursor to selected. All right. Now we're gonna edit. We're gonna leave edit mode. I'm gonna go back to this one. I'm going to edit this one. I'm going to select all of these, right? I'm going to set this to 3D curses. This should work. We're going, to sh we're going to scale X zero. And that will move that line up all the way that. So 
these two should line up perfectly. All right. And then we're going to go back and we're going to delete the PS2 vase. Whoop. And we're going to get the backup. We're going to duplicate that and bring that back into PS2. And that will be our new PS2 base. Now, why do we do that? Well, that's why we have a backup. Because I had applied the modifier. Because I wanted to see what it looked like. And because I had applied that. The line would have been off. So now that we have it. Now that I have unapplied that. We can go back and hide. We still have the modifier on it. That one vent. We can hide that. We can see those lines. I'm going to unhide this. Back to that. We're going to add another Boolean modifier. Uh, in fact, no, add another Boolean modifier. I was going to say we could just use the same one, but no. And this one will use that 1003. I really should give those better names. And we're going to hide that. And then, so we don't have holes exactly that go all the way through. I don't think these may that may produce a hole let's see nope nope let's just push this back but that's fine because if we want this to be a hole we could do, go through and clear these faces off we can do all of that the only reason i would want it to be a hole is if i was going to actually put something inside there as it is what i can do is i can make all of this inside super duper black and you'll never see it. Um, it'll just be darkness. And it has depth, actual depth to it that goes into the darkness. But you should never see like where it actually ends. It's good enough. However, there is one thing. And that is these two right here. So we're going to... I'm going to temporarily turn this off. I want, the reason I'm going to clear that off... Uh, while that Boolean is active, while I'm editing this or moving this... It will um, cause it to recalculate, and it will put a strain on my computer. It gets kind of irritating. All right. So it's these right here. These two at the bottom. These two. All right. Need to be... Uh, how can I... Double G to move them back. Let's see how far we need to move them back. Let's see if we can get a better view. That's rough because we're inside a bunch of stuff. I could hide a bunch of this. So if you hit G twice, it'll move things along its existing lines and points. It's useful if you can't move it along a set scale. So that's all the way back. We don't want it all the way back. We don't want it all the way fl flushed out. We want it to go in just a little bit. Because we can always extend this out further later. We want it to push in just enough to set that there. All right. Let's see what this looks like. Do, 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 do. All right, I think that looks good because it's right there. It's set in. Okay. And I think our fence good. This I would get a lot further in this if I either just skipped over the stuff that I'm like, I'm not sure how to do this. I'll come back to it later. Or if I had stopped talking about uh, Blu-rays and DVDs for five minutes. <laughs> Stop talking about stuff that uh, has nothing to do with any of this. So let's shift D this. You can see, like, how much it's struggling, like, dragging it around because while I'm moving it, it's recalculating all of those. Three, five, one. Uh, 
And I'm going to get rid of that one because we're basically duplicating that. And move this two back up. And then apply and apply. And we see some craziness there. We see some craziness. All right. That's fine. All right. I think most of this is probably... Flat black. Select all of this with that going through. And then we deselect... Uh, get rid of this. Deselect these. I think that should just be everything inside of there. Okay. Uh, oh, that vertex group ceased existing. That makes sense. Vent. Sign, deselect, select. Okay. select all that layer so that's all selected let's go to let's select that i'm gonna go to material and we'll assign that to the same thing everything else is assigned so at least we don't get that weird playstation stuff in there okay so that's set. so this this lower portion does not have the same grittiness that the upper portion does so we'll change that in that just by taking out basically that bump map we're turning it way down we'll leave the noise we'll leave the noise we may scale it a bit just to add some smeariness to the plastic well i i gotta say like i'm i'm at least happy because i was very nervous about doing blender partially because uh i kind of fumble around with it i get stuck on stuff a lot and it takes me forever to get stuff done so I don't know how entertaining that can be. We'll see if I can continue these. I would at least like to finish one console on this before I decide, much like the JRPG thing. I want to do it a couple of times before I decide if I'm not going to do it again. But I was nervous that I wouldn't be comfortable doing this. I'm, I'm feeling okay, but that's mostly because nobody's coming in here going like, no, you're doing it wrong, which I appreciate. Um, and hope nobody that knows what they're doing ever shows up and yells at me <laughs> for giving everybody bad advice. Um, but it's, uh, beyond that, I was worried about if things get more intense with Blender, is OBS just going to have a heart attack? If I was trying to render, like, render, render something, I'm sure it would freak out. Like, render an animation or something. All right. Next thing. More Booleans. We're going to Booleol. We're going to bull out the CD-ROM door, the memory cards, and I'll probably do this separately. And the reason I'm going to do this separately is that for the memory card doors and for the CD-ROM or the DVD tray, the, the disc tray, I want, I don't want to delete this. I don't want to make a hole this size. I want to cut a hole the size of this separation. So it will leave this piece, which I can actually separate out into its own thing so that later, if I want to animate the tray opening, I have something I can work off of. So I want to look at this real quick. It's a pretty even cut line. And it basically starts right underneath uh, the second one down. So right underneath the second one down, right? And then one, two, and then right a little bit underneath the bottom of that. That's a pretty smooth cut. And 
memory doors are pretty straightforward too. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to add some cubes. I'm going to do this one. I can do all three at the same time in theory. So we're going to shift a mesh cube. I'm going to edit mode, scale this, grab this, kind of line it up. I know this image isn't perfect, but I can line it up with the actual model. Let's go to seven, see where we're at. Grab it. Okay. Now we'll just grab these vertices. Grab that Z. Grab X. I'm grabbing the faces, aren't I? Same difference. So the perspective on that throws it. So let's get rid of these reference images here. Essentially, we want this. In fact, let's just go ahead and shove this back so we can line it up more. We essentially want the top of this, right? This is probably good because it's not going to cut right under that. Give it a little bit of space, but we essentially want it basically under that. So when you're looking at it, it looks like it cuts straight through under it. This one is also probably fine. We probably just got real lucky on this because it actually cuts um, a little bit underneath that, right? Yeah, because the disc door has two of these and it's ever so slightly lower. It actually could be a little bit lower. Grabbed all of that. Let's grab that. Let's bring that down just a touch. Doesn't have to be much. Very subtle. Very subtle difference. Let's grab all of this and this doesn't have to be that much. Grab Y. We'll do it like this. Because once we have it cut in, it could always be deeper. You know what? We're going to need to It's going to have to be at least as deep as that. All right. So we'll do about that deep. Because we don't want like a deep, deep hole in this thing. It's got to be something behind it. Okay. And just to save us some time, we will shift D and slide this over this way. Let's bring our reference back. All right, so we're gonna make two of these. One of them is gonna be duplicated off of the other one. We will, we'll call it right here. As long as I leave these unappl unapplied, once I get them lined up and in place, I can look at it and see how it looks, come back later. Decide to re reassign it. So that is below the second one, a little bit lower than the optical tray, above the third one. It's, it just leaves like a little lip on either end of this. All right. So we're going to go to three again. Let's go uh, control three. So we're coming at it from the other end. Let's get rid of the references again. Let's make sure we're selecting the only the correct one here. And that should be, yep. Grab this Z. We want it just a little bit below that. And then grab, grab three, grab Z. Just a little bit above that. It's probably, probably where we want that. All right. Let's bring that reference back and get the width. 
Oh, we're already set with it, which is pretty good. Okay. Grab all of that. Shift D X. Just slide that over that way. And now we have two of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift D Z and drop straight down. Because this will be where we can line up the controllers. Now these won't make good bulls for the controller ports as they are right now. But we can get them lined up. And I'm actually going to hit P. Which will separate them into their own thing. So now those two that I just duplicated are their own animal. Alright. So I'm going to put this door bull. Mem card bull. Uh, these are all vents. It's the it's two and three are the ones that I used. I can rename these. And it will, if you rename these and you reference it in something else in a modifier, it will update that modifier. So you don't have to worry about like breaking something. Because I know some software will do that where like you rename it and all the references just fall to hell. It'll, it'll remember that stuff. Blender's pretty good about that. Let's uh, blend one, that one base. And vent one holes. It's probably good. We don't need to get rid of the other ones. Let's hide that for right now. So let's go back to these. All right. And let's hide the PS2. Right, so what we have now is that we need to make these like an outline, right? This isn't the solid shape. It's got to be like an open-ended box. So we're going to select these. And it's approximately, not approximately the same thickness in all the doors, at least as my eyes go. So I'm going to hit I to inset. And I should be insetting them all individually. Let's go with about that thick. All right. And we can make these somewhat rounded on the edges if we want. I do want a little bit. It will complicate things as we go, but we do it. So now. We've got that. We're going to E to extrude. We don't want a manifold because we want to keep the sides. We're going to E to extrude. And we're just going to extrude them straight back. In fact, we can hit Y. It was already going Y. To keep them locked in. Don't, don't want to go further back than the actual back. Perfect. So what we can do now, I'm going to, I'm going to move these up and make the bool show it to you. And then I'll show you, you can kind of clean stuff up ahead of time. It's up to you ultimately, which where you go, if you do it beforehand or do it after, because let's say you want this to be, um, slightly, I'm going to make sure that I'm not crushing these things let's go ahead and hide door bool let's go back here boolean i use a lot of booleans and i don't exactly know if that's the best way it's a good way to cut this um same thing if you need to make like panel lines or anything it's a good way to make those cuts in them right but it can also really really jack up your uh your topology and leave you with like a horrible horrible mess and depending on what you're using the model for that may not be acceptable all right so we got our holes we got holes cut and more importantly we can take these faces this the shape around where it's cut we can go inside and see you can see where it has dipped in Oh, things are like freaking out now <laughs> uh, because of that. 
you can see where it's like clipped in there and it's solid. It's not like a hole. Or sometimes you might want like an actual hole through it. Um, sometimes you just want it to be pressed in. And I, that's approximately what we want. I think it's pretty well there. The gap might not quite be big enough. Uh, I went conservative on it. And the reason you might want it bigger is because in the real world, that gap might be bigger. Right? You might It might not be visible enough. Um, a couple of things you can do is once you have these doors separated off into separate pieces, you can adjust where they sit. You can push it back a little bit. You can push it up a little bit because they won't perfectly line up. It's not that precise of equipment, particularly the doors. They won't perfectly line up. They'll have like a slight angle because the, the memory card doors flip up. So they'll have like a, they could have a slight angle on them already. Um, or slight unevenness. One side could be slightly higher than the other. Same for the disc drawer. It's likely like going to be slightly on, on level or slightly in or out more because it doesn't quite perfectly fit. Uh, and when you make an animation, if you make an animation on it, you know, watch the actual PS2 because some trays will like bump a little bit because there's an internal mechanism that's raising and lowering as part of the eject mechanism. So the door may shift a little bit. And, do it. and there's little things like that that add to the life of this stuff. But for right now, I think that's okay. What we could do, I'm not going to do it because I want to make, I can do this separately. So what we could do is we could go in to the inner and outer edges on that. And we could add a little, I'll, I'll do it to show you. Uh, I, won't, I don't think I'll keep it. We can add a little bit of uh, bevel to those edges. Just round them off a little bit. So we don't have this perfectly square cut. All right, and what I'm going to do to make it so it doesn't freak stuff out is I'm going to uh, duplicate this. All right, so it's not trying to cut it while we're working on it. And we'll go to line mode and we'll go in zoom in. We want the inside lines. We want the outside lines. Probably want these interconnected lines there. And there. And this one and this one. And this one. And this one. Do all of them at the same time. Give them all like the same little bit. It doesn't have to be as uniform. You could do them separately. It might, it might be in this instance better to do the memory card doors and the disc door separately because they are separately sized, but. I have found like the, the bevel, if you're beveling this kind of thing, bevel the shape, the shape works more consistently. If you select this interconnecting line as well, but if it doesn't, you can leave that unselected. Just grabbing all of these outer and inner corners. So that once I round these off with a bevel, and I'm not going to do bevel modifier on this because I duplicated it. This is just for demonstration purposes. All right, let's get a little bit closer here and see. Let's bevel this. Give it, what are we at here? This, there's a lot of text at the bottom of this. Let's go up to eight. Just a real subtle, the more segments you do the more complex the the topography becomes the more the more lines and vertexes you're slapping in there but the smoother it will look now when it's real small it's probably not a huge deal so i'll just do five for right now what i've done is I'm, i've put a, a slight round edge on the inside and the outside maybe even more than i really wanted but 
Um, and you could do that with the bevel modifier too. And like I said before, it'll allow you to adjust things up or down. Also, when you perform these modifications, you can go back while you have just done it. Before you do something else, there's a little thing down here that has some settings on it you can adjust. But once you do something else, that's gone. So that's why modifiers are better. Unless you're just doing doing something super quick like this that I could just throw away. And so what we can do now is kind of hide that. And we'll go back to our PS2 base. You can see we got those nice clean lines. We'll change this to the other bowl. And now they're a little bit rounded. Right? And everything that you come off of it is a little bit rounded. And you can you could do this after you have applied the boolean um and you could do it separately if you want them to look uniform if you want these cuts if you want the door and the area around it i'm trying to get a good angle so you can see if you want those angles to be uniform and equal across do it this way that'd be my recommendation if you want them to be a little bit different, if you want any difference between them, if you don't think they're gonna need to be totally uniform, I would recommend applying that, once you get to the point that you're applying the Boolean and then go through piece by piece and pick out which angles you want and which ones you want to Boolean or, or not Boolean, bevel, what you want to adjust. You get a little more freedom that way. Uh, it just depends. There's a lot of times when you're doing something like this, you know, they would call it panel lining, where you make these, cut these lines into it. A lot of times you want uniformity because of what you're working with, some decorative things or something like that. If it's functional stuff, you might not. So different ways you can do things. And that, and that's, if you, if you work with Bunder, if you ever curious and get play with this, that, that is like my number one ultimate tip is like, there are, there are like the generally accepted best practices and ways to do certain things, but it doesn't cover all cases. Play around with it. Have fun with it. You know, play, play around, try different stuff. Don't be afraid to like, you know, it doesn't cost that many cycles on your computer or space to like, Hey, I wonder what happened if I did this, but I'm afraid of breaking this. Just duplicate the object. You've got a duplicate. You can trash, right? And if it doesn't work right, you just get rid of it. Or you could throw it over in the corner and be like, I'll come back and look at this later and see if I can change how I did this. You know, try different things. Try different things. And then the next time you do something, you might remember like, oh, hey, like last time I did this, this kind of worked for me. This kind of didn't. You know, I'll remember how I how I set this up and I'll use that again in the future. It will, it will be useful for me for other stuff. All right, so I got those. And then the memory card... Let's look at the memory cards. Doo -doo. And go for a little longer. At the very least, I don't know that I'm going to get the uh, that blue sticker, this stuff. I'll probably, at the very least, I'll get square cuts for this. I could No, I could do this too. That's pretty easy. And then when you do this, you could achieve this just with textures. Um, if you want to get real fancy, you could make that a separate, very thin piece that sits there. And then you could hide it, like take it off if you wanted it to, to have like a version that was like damaged and you want it to have the accurate thickness. But you could do the same thing just by making a texture of this. And you're going to need a texture anyway, most likely, because you've got these symbols. If you want to put those symbols in there, just make that a texture. And then you could make a different texture that looks like it's ripped off. There's just some adhesive stuck on there or whatever. You fake it, man. Just fake it. You could fake all of this. I could straighten this out, take a straighter picture of this, and then just like UV unwrap and just set this one section to be this. And mixed in with the rest of the procedural texture. That's the, the nice thing with that stuff. I have a, I'll show you, uh, well, you can do that right now. I have a, uh, 
believe I, I don't know if I can use that as a texture. Let's I'm gonna edit mode on this. Um, this middle line is kind of off. Does that line up? I'm gonna say if that lines up, like. Well, that doesn't quite line up. Kind of pretty nice. Yeah, so far so good. Like it doesn't it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. I said the one thing I see when I see a lot of people, and I'm not one to to to, to judge at all or to offer like that much help, but I see a lot of recommendations to start with um, Blender are from more organic type stuff, like if you're making people, and they use a lot of sculpting tools, which are like clay sculpting tools, which you can also do with this. I don't do a lot with that because a lot of the stuff that I work with, like this face right here, has to, you know, behave a certain way. And if I sculpt it out with clay, then I end up having to do a lot of work to like convert them to actual like clean meshes. Not that this is super clean. Um, but I also like machines and stuff like that. So straight hard edges, concrete things. Um, but I see a lot of people that start off with like take a cube and then subdivide it. So it becomes this round blobby shape. And then you just kind of drag pieces around and it can make it easier, especially for making round shapes. Cause you don't have to make each line you would to have to make this look curved. You can just drag the pieces and that kind of fills it in for you. But then when they end up with this, like this, but looking more like a pillow, I prefer coming at it from the other angle and then starting sharp. Um, and then it doesn't, it doesn't, it's like very simple texture work. You throw it on there. It's not going to win any prizes. It's not going to go for any real money, you know, but like, I don't think I need this middle divider line like at all. And I think I can get rid of it because I think I just use that for, and I don't think this is. actually doing anything now it's not actually even connected because of that boolean Let's see if i can uh nope i can delete this edge without I'm not entirely sure what happened that freaks me out because it like selects everything here um, try to put this in a context of what I can see. I mean, that's I think that's fine. I just want this like top piece can just be one mostly one solid face if with that line isn't actually con doing anything. I wonder why I didn't Ah, uh, see, that's the problem. Get rid of that. Oh, it's not necessary. I don't think it needs to be there, but I'm also like... I don't know. It didn't seem like it changed much. We just get that oddball line down there. Um, Worst case scenario, I could come in and clean it up. Add a new line. Just don't want the extra line causing causing issues there. You have these lines here, and that's very weird. And once you start cutting stuff in and doing stuff, like it gets very odd. So you have this line that's not connecting to anything. I could get rid of it, and then I'd have to recreate some faces, which probably wouldn't be that big of a deal because like there should be some geometry there anyway. Anyway. Um let's select this face and let's make a new material it'll be a duplicate of the black grit and make it logo so we've got an extra one and we'll assign it just to this face now we're going to come in here We're going to add an image texture. 
I'm going to, I've already got this texture coordinate. It's going to be a UV, UV to vector. And then we're going to mix this in here. I always forget which one is better to do which with an image. I'll use the alpha. The image is the factor on this. I may need to flip these. I may not be able to open an image on this. Let's see here. Projects. I didn't put it in. I have a folder for textures. I didn't put it in there. Still my reference materials. I want to slap one on. We're going to leave. Uh, 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 uh. It's not. Let me. But another program that you can't see, just so I can open in theory, an image file and save it. Open. It's only a PS2. Okay, it's not that. Cause I didn't, cause I didn't download it. That's why. That's why. All right, I'm gonna grab this one is not entirely accurate, but should do the trick. When I actually come, I'm just throwing this on real quick. Uh, a logo. I gotta change it to a different file. Yep. No, thank you. Uh, my 10 million tabs, each one is a landmine waiting for me to open. <laughs> All right. Uh, 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 sure, whatever. We'll fix that later. Oh, that looks awful. Well, so I did tell it low res. I am saving an image, an SVG, to a transparent ping so I can slap it in here. I would not do this normally. I like to go out and find... Uh, font. Let's go to UV editing. Okay. And let us get this. We'll project from view. Great. Oh, we're going to rotate this. And scale it. Normally, I like to find... Uh, Mm -hmm. Oh, because it's black. That's why. I like to find the font if I can. And if I can't, just redraw it. And I'll draw my own thing. That way you can get a much higher quality image than you're likely to find out there. If you want, you can just snap a picture of the back of it or find an image online and try and clean that up. I also like to do it. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but on all the councils so far... Uh, whatever company or whatever is listed on there, like the PlayStation, no, that's a jump station. The the Nintendo, no, that's a um, Jamendo. Uh, I've threw my own name on there through some uh, <laughs> probably useless attempts to avoid someone coming in saying like we own that, like Nintendo shutting down my stream because I showed an NES on there. At the very least, I'm not going to have the actual Nintendo or, or Sony logos on there. But it does mean having to come up with like, <laughs> yeah, it's the J Station. Who makes it? Joni? Jummy? Uh, if you notice this, I just threw that image in. And the UV stretches beyond the bounds of the image. And by default, it repeats. And you may want that. You may want it to just stretch and stretch and stretch like that and, and expand out forever. I don't. So we'll change this repeat to clip. 
and then we're good and then you can go back to positioning it how you please and we can look at that one and it needs to go up a little bit i think and over a little bit be more of the center and that's probably good right probably that's about right looks about right Actually, it didn't look half bad. Then come on, bad. It's, if you zoom in, it's a little low res. But the beauty of that mixing it in that way is that all of that texture comes through. Like it looks as in this case, what this part should, as though it is painted onto the case, applied directly into the plastic. You still get that texture through it. This part, however, does not because if you see an original PlayStation Two. That is actually uh, engraved ever so slightly into it. And so you could, uh, in theory, I don't know if I could pull just the color out for this. So there's two ways you could deal with this. That I, that I have. Um, one is using a texture as a bump map. Using this text with the alpha as a bump map. And then it can push that in. And then you get a little texture from that. I don't know how to grab just that. So I'll just grab the whole thing. PlayStation 2 are actually under the PS2 logo. They are. Do you see it? Do you see? It's there. It's just that it's black. But they, the PlayStation 2 um, is like in, uh, engraved into it. And so just having like the text there painted on doesn't look accurate. Now, if I were to also take this color, if I were to shift D and duplicate this bump. This is all getting a little unwieldy here. Let's drag all of this back. All right. And I'm also going to put this here under height. Probably does a lot more than I really want it to. Oh, yeah. It's messing up like a lot of stuff. But you can see, like, if I trimmed it out to just be the logo. My brightness so, yeah i don't i don't blame you clone because like it was it was you know of two very dark colors and, and youtube notoriously darkens things um i couldn't tell it was there for real that's actually uh poking out so we'll invert this one and you can just feed one normal into another and it all just kind of builds up let's see if this breaks it so now it's set in um and just like with this other texture, like that doesn't uh, offset any of the uh, topography, topo topography, topology. It doesn't add any new geometry to it. That's all handled with normal maps and textures. And it's a pretty nice way to do it for this stuff. The alternative is to make a 3D text, a solid 3D text, um, just like the other bits and use a boolean modifier to actually cut it in or you could also emboss it too there's there's different to use the uh i think the union will combine it so you can make text pop out of something too uh, and that can look really nice but i can tell you like there is a a text function all right i'm gonna i'm gonna get rid of this for right now uh simply because it's all with it all mixed up like that. It gets kind of messed up. And also this is kind of throwing that off with this color. Let's flip these. It's a little bit better. 
it's a little bit more visible, but uh, we'll try color float vector mix. Oop. I think I need to clamp the result. Let's do overlay. I can get trickier if there's colors involved. I don't know why it's like it's really darkening that up even more so. They don't want to expect it so. Multiply. Multiply is probably not. This is some of the stuff that like I don't see in the previous shading, but it's probably not. Uh, incorrect. I think I need that factor. I might not. Oh. No weird. Just it being there is like... Maybe there's a better way to do this now. Because you notice it's like... It's changed everything else. If I take this out of here, it should be. No, <laughs> it's totally busted up now. Oh, wow. No, it's, it's just like suddenly completely busted. Weird. No, no, no. Now, now, I'm, now I'm like, <laughs> now I'm stuck on why the, uh, Why this is different? Um, maybe I do. I have something. Mixed weird here. It must be because like this color is off. Oh, that'll do it. That's it. Okay. Let's try this again. It's weird out because the color on that was off, but I think it's just because I connected this all up wrong. Okay. No? No. I definitely, as soon as I put that in, it's like, no, thank you. So it is definitely like adding a weird darkening effect to it. Mm -hmm. uh, alpha straight. I'll try pre multiplied. Sometimes that. Does it? Ooh, that seems almost backwards. Like it's like that should be black. I'll switch these around. I always get this this wrong. I haven't had this much trouble with it. Previous ones. Oh, there we go. I think I think that looks right. I just had him the wrong way, and then the alpha was not set properly. Strange. Okay. Woo! Kind of spending a bunch of time going back and forth on it. Um, 
So I, if I was going to use the normal map to uh, engrave that, I would either look at a way to do it. I think there's a way to do it based on the color so that it only the black gets affected, but that adds a bunch more steps. Um, I don't really know how to do it off the top of my head, but I, I would look that up and see if there's a way to do that. I'm going to do that right now. Otherwise, I would just make a separate image with just the bits that I want uh, to include in the normal. And, it, and then put that in there. I've been wanting to try to do more with the text uh, to actually emboss it. I think for a lot of details, unless you need that physically in the model, a lot of times you're better off that way. But it can look kind of chunky, to be honest. It can look kind of chunky around the edges. But it also depends on the resolution of your base image. Um, the problem with the text is that uh, let's add a text object. And I'm going to change the font. Where is that? In here we go. Uh, font. All right. I'm going to change the. With the font regular, here we go. Let's open a font. I've got a font that matches this station. Why does font always look like a weird old thing? Um, as old as this, Zurich. And I'm going to edit this. I'm going to say PlayStation 2. And we're going to size it way, way down. I'm going to rotate this. Ninety. Grab it over here. That's well, almost perfectly sized. You can barely see this. Oh, it's not high enough. Grab it, Z. There's the two. So let's scale this up a little bit. Adjust the character spacing somewhat. Okay. That's pretty dang close, right? And that is the same font. So we have this font, right? I'm going to switch this over to not render all of that stuff. We got this font. Now I can't make this. I have to make this into an object. And let's... Um, Let's get text object at. What does that say? We have this get applied text. Oh, okay. That's fine. Fine. Uh, 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 let's say all transforms. Don't care. Whatever. So that is not like a mesh. If I go into edit mode, it's just editing text. And in order to make it something I can use with a Boolean, I have to turn it to an object. So I can go to object. Convert to mesh. Cool. This is a mesh now. Look at this. Look at this insanity. Right? That's pretty wild. And if I try to extrude the way it is right now, it'll just create a hot mess. Right? I, th I could probably... Maybe... Uh, add a solidify modifier, which will make it thicker, but that will also leave like weird, weird topology. So usually what you want to do is you want to go through and remesh it. You, you either, um, let's see, what would this be under? 
Let the form generate. Yeah. You either decimate, which removes, uh, it cuts down on the amount of polygons, the amount of vertexes in uh, an object. And you just kind of adjust it as long as it looks good. Or you remesh it. And let's put remesh above that. And we'll do sharp. And get out of edit mode so we can see it. And you can see it's mostly just gone as we're trying to remesh it. Uh, uncheck remove disconnected. And wait, where even is it now? Okay, there it is. Maybe this solidify. See, that was like. <laughs> oh no, thank you. <laughs> this is just. <laughs> it's decided that, like, the mesh is too rough. Like, we just can't. We can't even, uh, we can't even handle it is what, the, what it's t trying to tell me. Really like eight ought to do it. <laughs> it's just gone. It's just killing it. Yeah. So that's like, man, I'd have to work with that. I don't even know scaling oh. so I never really mess with this I usually do use the other options I was trying to mess with text the other day and I was doing a lot of this stuff manually which was not much better yeah like I can't even Yikes. <laughs> I couldn't even get that. Because if I go through this, like, in edit mode, and I try and extract this. Like, this might work. And then we'll get the same thing with thickness. But, like, each of these vertices would be in there, and it would leave an unholy mess. You get a lot of lines and stuff. There's a lot of stuff you don't need. Oh, jeez. Like everything is, uh. Oh, how I got everything selected there. That was very weird. Grab this C. We'll just give it a give it a taste, give it a little sampling. Boolean. see it because I'm not really sure why we can't see it <laughs> something up with the uh, facing on that where's where's my text that's very bizarre <laughs> there we go yeah exact is too much I was probably still thinking about it yeah look at this look at this nonsense look at this blah, blah. And like, you could fix that, but it's better just to fix that, the rest of the letter. Although that may also, that may just be a consequence of it trying to apply like, weird stuff scaled, you know, from this. It shouldn't really be blue. <laughs> but like, it looks good from a distance. It's just adding a lot. It's just adding a lot to it. 
Um, but I wouldn't do that unless you spent some time really cleaning up that. And you may have to do a lot of it manually, cleaning up that font. Um, I've, I've done stuff before with having text as a uh, SVG and importing that and then converting that to an object. And I found basically the same thing that in order to make those complex curves look real nice, it's got a lot of really insane uh, geometry going on. And it makes everything crazy. Uh, we've got those. I was going to do the controllers, which is, um, no, it's this one, mem card, mem card bool and get the, this. Okay. All right, so we've got this, the, they're in the location we want. We probably want them to be scaled a little bit thinner on the Z axis. What are we doing? And we don't want this to be three cursor. That could be why things were acting weird. Scale Z, just bring it down, bring it a little bit thinner. Maybe grab it Z, go up a little bit. And I'm hesitant to shrink them down too much. Um, let's do, can we do individual origins? There we go. I'm hesitant to shrink it too much because I think it's just like a trick of the perspective that is telling me that they're much shorter than the memory card. But I think they are ever so slightly shorter. Let me just look at it. Yeah, they're ever so slightly shorter. Not tremendously so. <coughs> okay. Now these... may make longer. Or maybe not. Yeah, that's it's medium. Let's scale these Y. Make these longer because we can always adjust back. Because I'm not likely going to shape out these ports from this Boolean. That might be an interesting thing to try and then it would leave it all the same. I would more, more than likely what I would do is use the boolean to cut this hole in here and then just flush that all back in just make that a big a gap and then make these things separately by duplicating these booleans and shaping them down or working within those scaling something to approximately that size uh what we're gonna do is we're going to um I'm going to add a modifier to this. I'm going to add a bevel modifier. And we're going to set the limit method to weight. And what that allows us to do is we can set, we can select lines and set a weight so that per line we can adjust um, our bevel. And it's this mean bevel weight here. And you can see how far here is going. Let's take a look inside. The 20. We'll set the segments. Let's say 15 segments. I don't know if even or odd makes a difference. And we'll just set that until it kind of lines up. All right. So the bottom looks pretty good. And then we'll set the top and because we set this by weight. We can set those to a different weight so that they don't go as far in. Probably about there. All right. Now here's where I start 
you start ending up with tons of extra stuff, right? So now I'm going to shift D that. We're going to level this pre-apply. You don't have to be this crazy. But it helps. I'm going to apply that. And then I'm going to add a boolean. Oh, wait. That wasn't what I want to do. So clicking and not really thinking. Another boolean on here. And it's going to be the mem card bool. And we're going to make that invisible. And there we go. Uh, not edit. And this. And that's fine. The way they are. It gives it some contrast. And we'll, we'll fix that after it. And we'll just do a render. Real quick. And you can see all of our booleans. Because they are set to render. Something to keep track of. If you are. You have your stuff hidden. The camera means that it's still being rendered. <laughs> so all that stuff was still being rendered. And you want to make sure of that for anything else that you have that you don't want to be seen in a render. That it's not just the eye, which is what you can see in the viewport. That is also that. So I'm going to save again. I should have been saving more frequently. But has got a pretty nice auto save. I'll say that much. Our light is in a weird position here for for looking good, but looking good. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, pretty decent. So we we'll, we can go through like this. We'll clean up a lot of the area here in terms of getting it the right um, the right texture, so it doesn't have as much grit as much texture to the texture um we got panel lines even if we don't do the back even if i don't do the back because you're not going to see it I'd still like to for the additional challenge but it's basically working off of the same principle as the rest of that make a boolean and then use that boolean to make a smaller shape or at least scale a shape that you can fit inside there. And that's what I'll, what I would do for the USB ports and stuff. Although the USB ports, at the simplest, I would take this uh, this face here. If I can even select this face. Take this face here and assign it its own texture, and then just drag that image in there and line it up, and call it a day. Because you may or may not see it. And, and if I want it to look nicer, I'd take a better image, obviously. But beyond that, you could go through and uh, recreate this in an image editor. Um, it's a pretty, you know, simple kind of gradient color. Simple shape. Uh, you're going to add that gritty kind of texture on within it. Within, you know, the the, the shading. Uh, shader shader nodes what these are called shader nodes you could add that in there uh and then it allows you to put this nice text on there and make it looks pretty decent you could also add some scratches to it or try and roll up the edge to it that's another nice thing if you made this its own thing you could apply little little bits to the edges to line it up and then i would just bowl in these shapes and if i didn't want to mess with making the usb ports or making something that complex I would just inset that face ever so slightly uh, and then just let put this in as a texture. And again, like it's going to be mostly dark. If you're looking at it from a distance, you're not going to tell really exactly uh, what it is that you are seeing. So little ways to, that you can cheat um, versus actually doing the whole, the whole shebang. Let's do those ports. Uh, we'll make one to put the little yellow thing in. It'll basically, we'll set it in. What we'll, what we'll do, because we've got this nice rounded shape here that it is set in. 
and then there's a little label there. What we can do is we can make this shape and then inset the face that we're setting into this a little bit and just give it like a very thin lip, very thin lip. We can do that. Um, and then on this edge, we can make the outer edge just go up to the top because that's about what it does. Yeah, like that sticker. The sticker part is rounded, but the actual inset is like a square line down to this curve. So that's what will make the shape. So we can make the shape so it will actually stamp out the sticker bit as well as this inset. Yeah, well, you think about the actual design for this stuff, like probably, you know, you probably certainly had some kind of computer aided drafting existed when this came out, but not certainly this stuff because they're still figuring out like 3D modeling. By this point, 3D modeling is fairly mature. Um, but it would be a lot of like old school sort of drafting and engineering and then sending it off to tool makers. You know, you would sculpt out like this box and then send it out to tool makers with specifications for where the circuit board had to go and so on. Um, I mean, it's not like they sculpted this thing out of clay and then cast a mold for it. Like, yeah, injection molding, tooling and stuff. But yeah, it, it is fun. It's fun going back through, like trying to recreate this stuff in Blender it gets you thinking about how a lot of these things fit together and what you know they do I, li I like when i get to a point where i'm animating it and i spend like a a good hour or so with the microphone butted up against the thing trying to record whatever kind of noise it makes powering on and like timing it out like i've got to make sure does the power light come on when the button goes down or when you take your finger off and the button comes up and then how long does it does it do that Xbox is going to be fun, uh, depending on how accurate I make it when you turn on the Xbox, the 360, because it like, spins up and it sits there for a while, and then the ring of LEDs will, will spin around, and then the whole thing just explodes, <laughs> just shoots molten plastic everywhere. Um, we make this shape, and then we could also uh, possibly inset, before rounding edges... Could, I could potentially inset these as well within the same shape. That might be going crazy. Let's find out. Well, let's find out. Let's make sure we got all of our bulls and our bulls there. Well, the bull in the bull zone. And we're about to be back at, you know, apply number two. This is a lot less than I normally do because I'm putting all the bullings, bullions like in the same thing. Um, Usually I'm, I'm like, I get so impatient, right? To, uh, I just add a plane. I add a plane. I'm getting impatient. <laughs> I get so impatient to see what it looks like that I end up like, like the 360 has like 20 and 20 backup models. Cause like I do one thing and like, what's it going to look like? How's it all going to work? Like apply it. But I'm also... I will say one nice thing for this is, uh, I'll just call this the USB bowl. I'm not going to go further than that. USB plate bowl. We'll call it that in case I need to make a USB port bowl. Um, the computer that I, that I normally do this on is, uh, much weaker. <laughs> it's an older computer. And I have, like, this is a newer computer than what I usually work on, do do the lion's share of my work on. Uh, so it's actually kind of refreshing because, like, it's running things uh, a bit smoother. I'm having less, like, hard... And that's while streaming, too. So far, the only thing that's really freaking out is the, uh, the phone <laughs> because it's been running for a while and it overheats, which is fun. Uh, let's cut this in a little bit more. Even though I know that's a perspective dilio. 
Where do we sit? Oh, I want to explain. It's like, why are we way out here? All right, let's get rid of these for a second. Okay, that's what I want to see, because I want this to go way up to the top there. Way up to the tippy. So far that it looks like it's set. I mean, realistically, it is set straight in. The only thing that I want to make sure of is that we'll give it a little bit of leg room because I don't I don't want it to shave off anything in that area. I just want it to butt straight up into it. Okay. All right, let's bring this back. All right. No, not that face. This face. Okay. All right. How can we do this? We would need three different faces here. Let's split this. Split this thusly. All right. And then split this thusly. Okay, this is going to be... This is going to be an ugly mess, I'll tell you that much. This is probably a real crazy way to do it. A real nonsense way to do it. So we're going to inset this. And we're going to grab X. We're going to scale X. We're going to grab Z. I'm going to grab this line. All right, and then we'll go to this side. All right, yep. got to make sure it's the right angle. No, get in there. We'll do basically the same thing. We'll inset this. Scooch. Scooch. And then grab this. And scooch that. can't exactly line that up, but I can get very close because, well, see, almost, almost got me there. Stop hitting zero. What are you doing? I'm getting, I'm getting sleepy. That's what's happening. All right. It looks the appropriate thickness. So what I can do is I can grab some lines here, set this to active element, grab this line and this line, and then I'll scale X zero and that will slide those line up perfectly. And then I'll do the same thing over here, scale S X zero and those line up perfectly. And these probably are approximately good enough. All right, and then we will take these three faces and, oh, you know what? I completely forgot about what I was going to do first, which was what should have preempted all of that stuff. Okay, let's scale back here. It's fine. We can, we can redo that stuff because I wanted to do the sticker bit first. So this is where it's kind of crazy because I'm like, um, oh boy, let's see if I can, if I can get rid of some vertices here. Uh, uh, uh. Can I just delete this? It's not going to let me delete this, is it? It's going <laughs> to... That's fine. Let's 
Oops. Oh God. Ugh. Oh boy, made a, I've made a fine mess of this. All right. All right, let's, uh... Let's do one of these. Okay. And then we'll just delete all of those. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. And then we then we can extrude this. Here we go. Let's take a quick look and make sure this didn't make everything go hog wild here. Uh, it did. <laughs> it's decided that it's all outside. Okay, there we go. Oh boy, I made a I made a hot mess out of that. You know, I reached a point with that where I should have just been like. Okay, let me just delete this and start over. And I just didn't want to. It's my my foolish pride. Like, no, I can still fix this. You can't fix it. You can't fix it. Let's inset this just a little bit. Just a little bit there. Except for this line. This line's gonna come home to market. Call it about there. Okay. And now we'll see if we can uh, get get hog wild with this here. Make a real horror show out of that. Yeah, now we can. Now I can turn this into a nightmare. Like. <laughs> It doesn't have to be. I don't have to do it this way. Now I'm just being ridiculous and stubborn. You know, I've been listening to this music for like how many hours now? I'm honestly, like, it just kind of faded into the background. I thought it would have driven me insane a while ago. So I guess uh, what I'm saying is I feel like I made the right choice with this song because it hasn't driven me to madness yet. Yeah. 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 Or, or it has <laughs> just, I guess when you reach a point where you have gone insane, it's kind of hard to decide. Like if you have, you know, like I feel fine. Like who are you talking to? Like talking, talking to the people in my stream. Like you've been outside for 45 minutes. What stream? Like, oh no. All right. All right. So we'll take. Ah, I'm blind. Okay. Take the outer faces of this. Should have done this before. Or but it's fine. Okay. Extrude ever so slightly. Just ever so slightly. Oh, you know what? I sent this to medium. Nope. Don't go, go, go get weird on me there.
I don't want it to be too much. We want it to be noticeable. We don't want it to be absurd. That's probably good. That's probably more than good. It's a very, be very thick sticker. But it is ideally a pretty thin wall, all things considered. Make it a little bit thinner there. Yeah. Extrude those out uh, a bit more. You can always go further back in if needed. Okay. Now we're going to can get round with it. Gonna get round with it. Um, I'm going to dupe this. Uh, oh no, I shouldn't dupe it yet. Should actually apply the uh, modifier or actually set the modifier up first so it's just set. Okay, set this to wait. All right, need to hide this so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay, we want this. This one. And this one, and this one. My other computer also, uh, I don't know what it is. It's just like the, <laughs> it's just like the location of, uh, we should do the outer edge too. Look, the location of everything, because my keyboard is not that much different, but I think the way my hands rest is very different. Uh, from one to the other. Uh, I have a lot of problems when I... The way that you uh, move stuff in this is you hold shift and middle clicked. And I just noticed it doesn't like... I just noticed that the screen cursors have disappeared. I don't know why that happened. There we go. I don't, I don't, I don't know when that happened. Um weird we hold like shift and middle click to uh to move it around right and <laughs> once in a while i'll go to move it and it's like it doesn't move it does it just kind of like does this instead of moving the way i want it to and i'm like what's going on and i'll realize you know after a while like i'm actually not holding shift i'm hitting the caps lock <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> and I won't notice till I go to type something like, why am I typing in caps? Why am I shouting? <laughs> it's because like, I accidentally hit the friggin' caps lock key. But then when I go to work in like Krita, in Krita, just like middle mouse drags the image. But if I, if you hold shift and use the middle mouse, it rotates the, uh, the canvas. And so I'm constantly like I'm shifting back and forth and I'm like hitting caps lock in blender and not not sliding things around properly. And then I'm in Krita accidentally rotating the canvas all the time. All right, let's go to our wait. We'll give these a bit of a bevel. feel beveled up in there because it's pretty beveled it's pretty beveled up there i don't know how the inside bevel is doing i think the inside bevel might be being its own lunch get some eight ten segments eight segments eight segments is fine well we'll do ten why not I'll run this in a little bit more
Uh, be less more in this. More segments? Less segments? Less segments, maybe. No, we want it to be Trapper, but there's an upper limit to that. I don't know, we're getting that there. I think that's that's probably good. That's probably good. Now, I think I'm going to add just a little bit uh, around the uh, USB and Firewire port holes just so they're not so perfectly square. And I won't have to come back and do this uh, some other time. I don't want to select them with the same as the other ones, which I was about to do. I don't want them in the same group. That throws everything off. I don't need to mix. Okay. Let's give these like just a little bit. All right, just the, that's getting too much. That's probably good. Cause they're a little, it's, they're pretty square, but like really perfectly square. But that's why I've got gonna have two of these. So nope, not that. Okay, ship D. Okay, and then hide you, and then I'll apply you. Generally, I like to apply. I don't think you have to, but I like to apply if if I'm made an object to act as the the cutter or the boolean i like to apply any any modifiers to that boolean holy crap my my face tracking has lost its mind here i think it's completely wiped okay oh that's weird <laughs> All right, well, my face is going to be stuck like this for a little while while my, my phone kind of cools down. I've seen some people recommend getting, like, a uh, a fan to attach to the back of it, and I'm just like, I don't know, man. I don't want to put a fan on my phone. I don't want more fans running in here making more noise. The mic's pretty good. But that's kind of irritating. Now I'm thinking about it, because I, I stream for about four or five hours, and this thing, like, I'm afraid it's going to blow up. And then my face gets frozen. Oh, delicious. All right. Well, we've got this bull. Let us uh, shove this in here a little bit. Oh, we should get this a little bit more at reference images. Should have. No, I don't think I needed to. Could have. Um, set this at an angle the same as the vent one. I probably still could do it. Let's just see what this looks like first. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I'm gonna take a look at this and see if that surely doesn't do that. No, nope, it's pretty even. Just see if it goes like a straight up and down. Some devices I've seen do that. So we will need to put an angle on that. But this is good enough for now. I can put I can put a little angle on it. So I'm not gonna apply this, but it's decent enough. So we just have to make a texture for this and so now we can pretty safely just apply it to like this outer area here um all right let's take a look oh boy yeah that's all that's all pretty crazy Let's 
let's look at angling that. Uh, let me look at the at base. Can I put it, rotate anything on any of these? No. Okay. I'll just have to I'll just eyeball this. Um, let's get rid of that bull first, just so it's not trying to recalculate that while I'm working on it. Just clear that out of there for now. I just find it irritating. <laughs> Honestly, when it's like, I go to move it and it's like, because <laughs> it's recalculating it. Hmm. What's going on? All transforms. What is that? What does that even mean? All right. It looks pretty good to my eye. Of course, I shipped in it. It's pretty good. Not super duper exact. Not super duper exact. Uh, what is the rotation on that? I'll copy this. So I can put it in this. Now move this to the same location, which is what I should have done before duplicating it. Let's uh, cursor to selected. Uh, selection to cursor. Cool, that ain't right. Oh boy, that ain't right. <laughs> what happened there? Oh boy. No, oh, we'll just bring it in. gotten like it's gotten messy this fell a lot of line I guess all that all that beveling made it get wild okay all right let's uh go back to this and we'll make the bull again time to make the bull ends. and that looks pretty looks pretty even that's what i like i don't know i'm gonna bring it down a little bit because i don't like how it's cutting like you see how it's going up i don't like that to fix that that means i'll have to move both of those because i want them to be I want them to be equal in case i have to go back all right so we've got we got that we got that uh i'm gonna have to wrap it up because everything is dying here um we're pretty good yeah i'm just kind of blasted stuff across my microphone we're pretty good we're doing pretty good so far uh, i'm pretty happy with it 
Let's open up our reference images. Let's save. Take a look at our reference images. Okay. Well, obviously we haven't done anything in the back. There's a lot going on in the back. A lot that I could work with. Um. What's happening here? It's like a weird pattern down there. That could just be from all the other stuff going on. Um, strange. So there's a lot going on in the back that I'm, I will probably do. Some of it could just be done with booleans and then splitting parts out and adding some textures to it. Um, we've got along the back there and then the side here is a uh, seam that are references. Yeah, you can see there's a seam along the side and that runs up to uh, here where it kind of cuts in. It's got an odd shape. But if I, noticing basically like the bottom of this ledge is separated. So the line runs pretty much like completely up to this. It's straight on from this line. So all I'd have to do is take it straight on from this back. And then this has got a little lip. You may or may not even be able to see it. So I don't know if it's worth putting on. There are some vents now that I'm looking at it on the underside of this. You can't see them in the, the ref one of the, the bottom reference might be able to see it, but there are some vents here, mostly just indents. Um, oop. little area there. It's a little detail stuff. The bottom has all kinds of stuff. It's got all this warning thing. Um, where's the bottom? I think I even put the bottom in here. Did I? No, I didn't. The bottom has got like feet, screw covers. Uh, there's a caution electrical shock. Do not open. I may or may not put that in there. We will never soon. Probably should. The top, we've got some other stuff that I could put on, but they're just like, that's just image texture stuff. So it's mostly like the, the bottom, the side bottom where there's feet and a line and then the back. Otherwise, like the top, I'm pretty happy with. I could clean some of that stuff up. That it's like, yeah, I'm like mostly done except for most of the sides. Um, like this side's pretty much good. I consider this like the bottom, right? We're gonna put lines and stuff in there, in the bottom. Let's uh move that light around. Where's the light? It's coming. It's coming. It's not there yet. Uh, buttons. What am I thinking? Of? I got still got the buttons. Those buttons will be easy. They're just square holes, and then you just make little triangles. Mark work those out. So, uh, we'll see. We'll see if I schedule this more for next time. This has been this has been really fun. I hope this has been uh, somewhat informative, for people, or at least uh, entertaining to watch. Um, I definitely got. Um, super duper distracted by things I was talking about and then had one or two things that I could have probably sorted out and gotten done quicker. It's a lot of like, when I work on this stuff, it's a lot of little tediousness and like planning stuff out before I start working on it. Um, and it tends to go very slowly. I'm not super quick yet. 
little made any little fine adjustments. Uh, so yeah, vents, the buttons, the buttons will be interesting. There's lights in them. I got a couple ideas of, of how I want to work with those. Uh, and then we'll be cutting a line in. I will probably make a shape that can be used to cut across the back area. We'll do more bools. It's a, lot, a whole lot of booling. And then make adjustments to that. Uh, we'll see. Otherwise, if I don't come back and do this again on stream, I'll just do it on myself. But I'll probably come back and work on it again uh, on stream sometime next week. Um, don't know what day. Possibly Monday because we, Mario should be. We should wrap up Mario tomorrow. One way or the other, it's going to wrap up. Um, on Tuesday, still got Resident Evil. Let's, I could schedule this for Wednesday again. What was I doing Wednesday? Well, Wednesday, I haven't been able to stream for a while. So, yeah, and there's that. Well, I'll see what uh, the next week holds. Um, I would like to come back to this uh, on stream. Otherwise, I'll finish it in my own time. But if I come back to this on stream, I can work on other stuff in my own time, including possibly fixing my existing things so they work with the newer versions of Blender, <laughs> possibly. Um, all right, thank you, everybody, for hanging out with me uh, while I ramble on and uh, showcase my subpar very early beginner style uh blender skills to try and put something together here that uh i'm sure i need somebody could put together a lot quicker but i get i get locked in on small details so it is what it is uh hope you enjoyed i had a lot of fun and i hope to see you back again on the next one uh tomorrow is thursday yep mario we're gonna try and wrap up mario try and finish the final final fight mario might have to grind some we'll try not to grind too much um otherwise i'll just <laughs> brute force my way through the fight so we'll see um anyway that's been jump jumpington uh thanks for watching and i hope to see you again on the next one so long everybody goodbye